at this auditorium. And uh, the first order will be to, uh, for the introduction of late items, Ms. Harrison. Thank you, Your Worship. Add item 6B-1, delegations pertaining to agenda items. Mr. Leon Cake and Ms. Christine Cake regarding request for proposal number 1003. Add item 6B-2, delegations pertaining to agenda items. Mr. Darrell Wright regarding request for proposal number 1003. Delete item 11I, staff reports, unsightly premises, 2166 Lancashire Avenue. Add item 11M1, staff reports, expropriation of part properties required for Bowen Road realignment. Add item 11O-1, staff reports, UBCM Community Tourism Grant. Thank you very much. Could I ask for an adoption for the agenda, please? Moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed carried uh, adoption of the minutes. Move adopted as circulated. Second motion. Move and second. All in favor? Opposed carried. Um, the uh, next, uh, we have a, a presentation, and Councillor Unger, did you want to move this, please? Thank you, Your Worship. I have two items. First of all, uh, I'm told that Councillor Johnson is celebrating her 39th birthday again today. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Well, we'll certainly keep that a secret. No, we'll ever find out about it. So. And uh, the item at the end of the agenda, uh, Operation Nanogram, uh, Mr. William Franklin, if we move that to the front of the agenda, please. That's a move. Second. Move and second. All in favor? Carried. Um, so, sir, if the delegation is here, if you'd like to come forward. Where's the gentleman here? Again, we move the financial plan. Yeah, when we get to it. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. It's a pleasure to report to you um, as to um, the progress of Operation Anymogram on behalf of the Vancouver Island Military Museum, what uh, we've accomplished in the last six weeks. It's thanks to your unanimous endorsement of our project that we got off to such a great start after the March 22nd Council meeting. Not only have we received the support and participation of most of the major groups and organizations in Nanaimo, uh, but we've also collected thousands of signatures and greetings from the public. Um, regarding a representative sample, we have approximately 10% of the town of, of the city of Nanaimo. Um, oh, we're currently at uh, over 7,000 greetings from Nanaimo residents compiled in all of the books that we have. Um, and I'm just going to show you the books. These are uh, most of our books. Um, they're not exactly full, but they are packed with uh, tremendous greetings. The youngest person to have signed was Daisy and she's six and the oldest is Wally and he's a hundred then oh. we've covered all the spectrum in between um, including service personnel uh, in our VIP book which you also have signed uh, we have the signatures of the representatives of most of the major organizations in Nanaimo uh, nonprofit businesses um, as well as government uh, Organizations, And I say most because we just haven't had time to get around to all of them. Um, we will have our books on display at the Nanaimo North Mall on this coming Friday. And anyone who would like to come out and uh, look through the books of greetings, we'd be more than happy to show them. Um, this evening, uh, we would like to uh, have you receive these books before they head off to uh, Afghanistan at the end of the month. On uh, May 31st, we'll be sending them via the 748 squadron, uh, communication squadron, over to Afghanistan to be received and then distributed to all parts of Afghanistan where there are Canadian men and women serving. Um, one of the other plans that we do have is to try and digitize the information, scan it onto computer, and then make it available to the public that way. We're just looking for some expertise to help us with that at the moment. Um, we have in this project 
uh, encountered the tremendous warmth, the generosity, and the patriotism of Nanaimo residents. Uh, warmth, um, most, uh, most of the people who we've explained what we're about have um, uh, gladly signed uh, some as much as two pages in our books. The generosity, uh, we've had businesses, once we explain who we are, said, how can we help? And the patriotism uh, by most of the organizations um, pitching in and writing something uh, tremendously moving in our books. The uh, RCMP, for example, when we left a book for the different shifts to fill in, about 98% of the membership there um, of the officers uh, signed our book, so, and as well as the fire department. Hmm. So we're very pleased with uh, the response. And I wonder um, we could answer any questions, and then we could move to a uh, photograph okay. of council. Are there any questions for the delegation? Seeing none, I guess we'll um, move into it now. And I think you're going to... Uh, am I on with this one? I am on this one. So let's, we'll move to the front here. And then if you gentlemen would like to uh, come up to the front with it. And, oh, good heavens. I might have to... Um, well done. Well done. I think all of council signed it. Probably not some of yourself. Mr. Holden. I see. He was what they refer to that as MIA, I believe. <laughs> okay, but that's how you can get Okay, so, uh, well, this is very impressive. And on behalf of the city uh, of Nanaimo and council, certainly, and the 85,000 residents of Nanaimo, I want to thank you, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> when we get organized, uh, for all the work that you've done in putting this together. You know, and it's a huge salute and recognition to the men and women of the armed forces, the Canadian armed forces, who um, are putting themselves at risk every day uh, in Afghanistan. And I want to thank you very much for um, the efforts that are to, to organize this and to send it overseas to Afghanistan. Thank you very much. Okay. This is the Have we got everything all lined up now? That... <laughs> Politics plays a part in everything we do. So, um, anyway, thank you, gentlemen. Um, we're going to get the pictures done now. Yep, they're ready. I'm good. Yeah. Sure, go off. The hot rod. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate all the effort and hard work that went into it. And that's the correct way to fold the flag. Thank you, Councilor Sherry. Well, if I shake hands, I won't. You didn't have to kneel in the front. Okay, we'll get back to the agenda here. That, uh, sorry for the interruption, but I think it's uh, significant. Um, these people have done um, a huge job in um, organizing this on the behalf of the city, and uh, I think we're all appreciative of the effort, not only that these people have made, but to our fine men and women of the armed forces who um, are overseas now uh, representing our interests. Um, we're going into delegates that pertain to agenda items now up to 10 minutes. And um, are there any delegations pertaining to the 2010-2014 financial plan? Seeing none, we'll move into item uh, B. Miss, sorry? This is the last kick is right. Um, don't encourage it, uh, Councilor Unger, that um, the next um, uh, 6B is uh, Mr. Ten, uh, Ten, I'm sorry, Tim Borian, um, Corex uh, Water Products uh, from Duncan, uh, regarding a request for Proposal 1003, Primary Water Works Supplier. Welcome, sir. You have up to 10 minutes. Thank you, uh, your, your Worship and uh, members of the Council for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I'm uh, Tim Bordian. I'm the Regional Manager for Corex Water Products, uh, based out of the uh, Duncan branch. Um, uh, I'm regarding uh, RFP uh, 1003, the uh, Water Work Supply Services. 
I'd like to address a few points that I read in the local paper and witnessed the last council meeting, the Finance and Policy uh, Committee, uh, month, last Monday, uh, May the 3rd. It was as stated by at least one of our competitors that preference should be given to a local supplier, even though one of them is not a local-based business either. On page 3 of the RFP in the selection criteria, it is noted 10% of the evaluation was based on proximity of the warehouse and distribution warehouses to the City of Nanaimo Public's workyard. Uh, this evaluation already gave some preference to local-based businesses. It was suggested that the District of North Cowichan uh, may give preference to the local companies. The District of North Cowichan gives no preference to any firm and reviews all tenders without prejudice. Over the past year, the District of North Cowichan has awarded $5.6 million uh, to Nanaimo-based companies, and this year they're tracking ahead of that figure. In fact, I'm unaware of any city or municipality in British Columbia that has a local preference clause. The, the RFP has a number of points which, it's, which it was evaluated. We do believe that we do service our customers to a higher standard. And within that RFP, we had listed seven account managers or product specialists that regularly call within the NIMO and would support our service for this RFP. That's not including any inside sales support. This is unmatched as it is common in our industry to have one or two reps at most out of any particular branch location. Uh, our fleet was discussed. To clarify, we have a total of nine delivery trucks on Vancouver Island. Most of these are tandem axle trucks with cranes. Three of these delivery vehicles would be directly involved in regular service to the city and Nanaimo works yard or job sites. Uh, we do not, uh, we, we did not include pickup trucks or other utility trucks into our fleet number. Uh, only trucks dedicated for delivery with dedicated drivers. At the, re at the request of city staff, we had provided uh, the pricing structure for any items not listed on the RFP. So we will not have free range of pricing the miscellaneous items as it was suggested. Uh, this, this information was requested by city staff after we were deemed best suited to provide this service to the city and before the staff made recommendation of Corex Water Products Award to Council. We have other regular customers within the city in Nanaimo, so we normally will not be making dead-end runs to the city stores. Uh, it was suggested that maybe this choice wasn't green, uh, but we will not be wasting any fuel, and we are not billing any, uh, f the, the city for any delivery charges. Uh, we did not see any flaws within the tendering process, if there was any, uh, but I failed to understand why these points were only brought up after the tender closed and the results were released. Uh, it should be noted we were 11 to 12 percent low for a total savings of $390,000 over a period of the contract and a further 2 percent discount for paying by the 15th of the month following. In closing, I would like to ask you to consider supporting the decision of your staff in recommending the award for Corex uh, Water Supply to Corex Water Products for the Water Supply Services contract. Thank you. Okay, sir. I um, see if you've got a minute. Uh, one question now, Councillor Beswick, um, and then followed by Councillor Peggy. Councillor Beswick. Thank you, Worship. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Bordian. Uh, question, do you have any other five-year contracts with any other municipality? Or, do you have or, a five-year contract with any other municipality? As in a five-year contract like this? Yes. Uh, and our water products services out of the Duncan shop, no. As Corex water products, we have some very long-term, or as other divisions of our Corex, we have some very long-term contracts with some municipalities. This particular RFP has been done in certain other industries like the industrial to our waterworks supply this is fairly new so this is a relatively uncharacteristic contract in your industry it, it's this is fairly new to this to the waterworks supply but it's not new to things that are things similar like pulp mills and stuff like that so, so, so this is very uncharacteristic to your industry this is a the, the, we have some other 
with the, with other municipalities, we have fair, some fairly long-term contracts with other municipalities. But the supply service of this, this is a fairly new concept. Thank you, Councillor Patchy. Thank you, Worship. Thank you, Mr. Bodian. Is Corex a Canadian company? We are a Canadian company. We are based in uh, our head offices in Vancouver. And how many branches does Corex have on Vancouver Island? We have four. And what other places are the other three then? We have uh, one in Victoria, one in Langford, our Duncan branch, and our uh, Courtney branch. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Councillor Kip. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, how long have you been in Duncan as a company? Uh, since uh, 1995. And how long have you been dealing with the city of Nanaimo? Uh, from probably that time, from 1995. Okay. Thank you. One more question, Paul. Um, you mentioned you have seven technical experts on staff. How many people on staff at your Duncan that report to your Duncan operation daily? There is uh, about ten. Ten. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sir. I see no further. Move second. Oh, did you have another question? Yeah, I did have one. I did one more. Um, through the, uh, the gentleman. The pricing model stated on page 132 in the program, it talks about the 20-80 split on your contract and the typical model. Um, what is the defined pricing model in place? Is it a percentage, cost plus percentage? The, the model is on uh, the uh, on invoice cost plus a percentage, yes. Okay, and within your industry, do you have a rebate system? where if I purchase over a million dollars a year's worth of supplies at a retail price, there's a rebate commission at the end of it? There, there is some type of system like that for some of the product groups, yes. Okay. And does that get turned back to the city, or is it a, a company purchase? Uh, that can vary, but what we did do is go from invoice markup be, so that, that that figure can be easily tracked, so and uh, so what we did is we shrunk the margin to take the back end into, into consideration. Oh, thank you. Answers my question. Thank you. Good. Thank you, sir. I see no further questions. Thank you for your time. The delegation. Second all. Moved and second. All in favor? Carried. Okay. Thank, thank you, sir. You. Thank you. Uh, the next delegation um, is Mr. Leon Cake and uh, Ms. Christine Cake. Um, Again, you have up to 10 minutes. It's my understanding that in discussion with staff, this is new information and not information we've heard on the two previous occasions. Am I correct? Thank you, Worship. Council, congratulations on your birthday. <clears throat> my name is Leon Cake. I live at 5936 Schooner Way. I'll have to pull this up so I can read it. <clears throat> I live at 5936 Schooner Way, and I I am here representing Four Star Waterworks regarding RFP 103, 1003. <clears throat> this system used to evaluate the proposal was flawed in several ways and I'm requesting that the RFP 100 be cancelled. First, I will outline my concerns regarding the evaluation process by referring to the selection criteria. Quality and experience of waterworks staff was, was worth 15%. How was this measured? Did you take in consideration the years of experience of staff in the branch which would supply the city and animal? Or were all Vancouver Island branches of the chosen supplier included in this evaluation of quantity and experience? How was this weighted in the evaluation? Is one person with 20 years experience equal to 20 people with one year's experience? Proximity of warehouse and distribution warehouses to the city and animal public works yard was worth 10%. Every bidder, with the exception of one you have chosen makes this, to make this award to, is located within a 20-minute drive of the city in Mo's yard. In fact, the second bidder is only 500 metres away, your chosen supplier by the farthest away at 58 kilometres from the city yard. References from large volume waterworks accounts in BC were worth 10%. We supplied five layers of reference and not one of our references was contacted. How were they weighted? Was more weight given to those from municipalities and engineers what about those reference letters written by contractors who may have participated in sales contests in years past, who may have accompanied the supplier on a vacation in Mexico? What about letters written by the city? What, what about letters written by customers not even served by the Mid Island branch which would serve the city? Would there be much value to a letter of reference written by a customer on the lower mainland not even serviced by the branch submitting the bid? Interview and inspection of waterworks operation was worth 
In the case of our inspection, it took less than one tenth of the inventory in our yard. <coughs> Pardon me. In our case, this inspection took in less than one tenth of the inventory of our yard. Of the six indoor storage facilities in our yard, only two were entered. No more than 10% of the remainder of the carefully organized inventory in our yard was scrutinized. A great majority of our site visit was taken up with social conversation, while at least one of the other suppliers was told, <coughs> we are going to ask you five questions. Our conversation just continued from social, briefly to business, then back to social. The entire site visit was conducted so informally that it was impossible to know when we were being evaluated and what we were being evaluated on. Company's financial portfolio and annual sales was worth 5%. Each of the suppliers bidding this RFP have been successful in this business for well over a decade. Financially, each of us is capable of maintaining the inventory and cash flow to support this bid. So how was this weighted? Did the most points go to the company with the biggest portfolio and the largest sales volume when all of its BC branches are included? In this, is, in this evaluation, is the biggest the best? Parts and availability and price was worth 25%. Historically, the city of has held yearly tenders for the main groups of waterworks supply. Pipe was never included because of the volatility in the price of resin used to make the pipe. In fact, since this tender closed, one of our suppliers has reduced their price already by 7%. The pipe pricing, by the way, is included in this RFP. We know that the 80-20 principle was used to determine which products would be used in this competition. Evaluation was on the basis of prices you have received on that 20% of the product that the city uses to do 80% of your jobs. Currently, Four Star Waterworks holds the tender for sewer fittings. On the bid submitted for that tender, there were 102 products listed. On this RFP, there were 19 to bid, leaving an awful lot of products unpriced. Also on this RFP, we were asked to quote a product called Coreflow Pipe. This has been removed from the pro approved products list of the city of Nanaimo. In September of last year, the city returned its entire inventory of this type of product to us. So imagine our surprise when it appeared on the RFP. Now I have some comments to make regarding staff's recommendation to council on this matter. <clears throat> regarding the City of Vancouver contract which our company holds for valves and hydrants. We were second bid, an award was made to us on the basis of a 10 year warranty, parts discount, superior maintenance advantage and no charge training. The only reason why I brought that up in the past was to show you that it was possible to award a contract to second bidder. One of the comments to council says, this will assure the city's supply when the market gets heated. Wouldn't it be better to have seven suppliers to choose from in a heated market? And I don't know what a heated market is when the seven million homes are in foreclosure in the United States and the suppliers we deal are majority of the, the, the suppliers in the Canadian industry of waterworks come from the states and a lot of them are really, really having a hard time. It says that, it says this award will reduce the amount of processing. Each shipment will generate a packing slip which will have to be checked and matched to an invoice much as it is now. It says that one of the opportunities is to develop strong working relationships, etc. to help assist with areas of improvement and increase business opportunities. To me, this begs the question, is your intention to contract out parts of your work chart? For example, are you at some point ten, intending to contract out things such as meter reading or meter installation, or, or will you be seeking private-public partnerships and infrastructure support? Although most of us are not, the company you wish, you wish to award this tender to does provide these services. It says that the supplier will get intimate knowledge of the city's operations. Why would this be necessary? Then I have some comments regarding the outcomes listed. It says that it's estimated that the city will save $390,000 in direct material costs over the five-year term as compared to second rank proponent. How was this figure arrived at? The initial pricing must only be held until December 2010. Was the 11% difference in tender price extrapolated to include the remaining four years and five months of the contract? After the first seven months of the contract, negotiations can take place but they won't take place in the same competitive environment. There will be no competition whatsoever. Is it, 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 is it even 
possible to ensure that the negotiated prices will continue to be 11% lower than what another supplier would offer in a competitive environment. It says that $100,000 will be saved over the five year term by taking advantage of early payment discounts. It is commonplace in this industry to offer early payment discounts. Do the other bidders offer the same discount? This statement makes it sound like the city stands to save $100,000 more if this contract is awarded to Corex than to any other bidder. Is this true or does the city stand to save a like amount from any other, the other bidders? City staff has admitted that the RFP process with an extended contract term is not a common procurement method in the waterworks industry. Why then have they decided to fix what's not broken? Meaning the yearly tender process, when, when to my knowledge it provided the best value to the city of Nanaimo. The city of Nanaimo already gives 100% of its meter business to Corex Water Products and Duncan. If they are awarded this contract, they will have a monopoly on the sale of all of the city's water rich products for five years, no competition. I'm aware, that this, I'm aware that council does not have the ability to cancel this tender because we have differing ideas of what constitutes best value to the, to the city of the Nile. Of beca <clears throat> or because of, monop of monop monopolies, or because this RFP seeks to fix what is not broken, or if you do not do your share <clears throat> Pardon me. Or if you do or do not share our fears of potential contracting out of the parts of the city workshop, but you do have the ability to cancel this tender if you see any value in my description of the flaws that I've described in the proposed evaluation process. <clears throat> the report from staff identifies the following options for city council. Award as recommended or cancel the competition. <clears throat> is my respectful request that RFP 1003 be cancelled because of the flaws which I have described in the evaluation process. Thank you. Okay, we have a question. Councillor Patchy. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Mr. Cake. Um, we have met you twice before and this is the third time that you address us and to me the question that Mr. Bordian asked of Corex, why now? Why after the process was complete? Uh, I still don't have a proper answer for that. Because the evaluation process that we understood that would give us percentage points that would give us rewards, we do not feel that the same criteria was used in my report that I submitted. Your evaluation for 10% for our work chart, coming through our store and seeing what we have available. We spent 40 minutes talking with the site people because we know them. We spent eight minutes discussing a million dollar inventory by walking 50 feet. We weren't asked do we carry 12 inch pipe? Do we carry 14 inch pipe? Do we know that we need 16 inch pipe because the city has 16 inch on Lost Lake Road? We were not asked what we carry. To me that's the most important part of your evaluation. You should know your infrastructure because I think at times we know it better. That's why we inventory. Thank you, sir. Okay, the other question I have <clears throat> is to staff, if I may, Your Worship. Um, Mr. Cake is throwing doubt on the savings of $390,000 over five years. Could you comment on that? Uh, we basically uh, took the savings of forecast and used our 2009 usage uh, and uh, received all the, the pricing. Uh, we compared all the spreadsheets up until, uh, uh, so we used what we would save over the, up until December uh, 31st, uh, 2010, and then we just extrapolated it based thinking that we had the same pricing and the same uh, usage. So we just moved it forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kay. Councillor Kip. Um, yeah, I've asked the two other people over time the same question. Um, this, uh, you have a pricing model for your company. You put a price, a retail price. Do you have a rebate system? Yes, we do. Um, what, so if I have a million dollar sales, there would be a, if a 10% at the end of it or something like that? The rebates in our industry are double digit rebates. Rebates in our company, because we are a family company, when those rebates need to be used in competition, they are used. They are not normal to be used in our industry. Rebates are, were established, the history of rebates was established for the multinational company to be able to 
we used to call hide the true profit. Thank you, and uh, I think that's it. Councilor Sherry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to follow up on Councilor Patchy's uh, request to staff uh, on relation to this $300,000 or $400,000 saving over that period, was each of the proponents evaluated or were did they just the, the one that you uh, are recommending? No, all, all seven uh, proponents' proposals were evaluated. And, and were their savings also included with the other ones that were uh, not successful? Uh, yes, uh, there was, and it, and it did vary depending on the supplier and what they were offering. So if I, I just want to get my handle around... The thing is, is that you're talking $400,000 saving from the one supplier, okay? If supplier number two had $150,000 uh, annual savings as well, so the difference between the two of them would be the, the true savings for the community, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, no, the, the $390,000 projected savings is uh, uh, based on the comparison of the highest ranked proponent and the second highest ranked proponent as we went through the uh, uh, evaluation criteria which uh, examined uh, multiple uh, different criteria. So uh, there was uh, uh, a saving, if, if we went and uh, looked at different uh, uh, pricing models of the individual section on that, it varied. It was uh, uh, really um, um, it was uh, there was a quite a quite a difference. It wasn't all the same. I'm still not quite clear on your your question. The, the question is, vendor A said that I can supply you the goods for the next five years. And on our current pricing for those goods, it would mean that we would have a $400,000 saving over that period of five years. Okay? Proponent number B, okay, comes in and he says, I can have, uh, save you $200,000 over that same period. And to me, the difference between A and B is 200,000, not 400,000, okay? And that's what I'm trying to get a handle on as to when we start talking about savings, what are the total savings? Is it they, that much sharper pencils and they can come in $400,000 less expensive than the, the next closest one? Yeah, in this particular case, we uh, looked at the pricing and the usage up until the end of uh, December 2010. So the number one and the recommended uh, proponent was $75,000, $77,000 cheaper uh, than the uh, second rank proponent. So we extrapolated that uh, five years. In addition, we were getting... Um, uh, the uh, early payment discounts that the city currently does not enjoy uh, and we don't uh, receive the uh, early payment discounts uh, even when we do have previously done an annual tender or do the spot buying so that was uh, based on our one million dollar spend estimated spend that uh, equated to twenty thousand dollars per year so if you look at our savings just up until December 31st, uh, 2010, it would be the approximate 75000 plus the uh, 20000 to be about $95,000 over the second highest ranked proponent. Thank you. I think basically what we're asking is that it's net-net against net-net, so the value, the comparison has to be equal, and I'm sure, is that what you're yes. saying? Yes, all proponents were given the same list of 194 parts to give us a net price on. Okay. Councillor Sherry, I'm sorry, Councillor Bestwick. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a question to staff. Are we currently under any contracts that have not expired for any of these products? 
Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Cake alluded to one that expires at the, uh, uh, I think it's uh, July 9th of this year. And there is another one. I don't have it right here in front of, well, I don't have the opportunity to take a look. There is another one of a minor nature that expires uh, July 31st, uh, 2010. So um, through July, we're obligated, per se, to fulfill those contracts, although uh, there may be a new five-year contract awarded tonight. Uh, that is correct, yes. We will honor the current obligations until they expire, and the intent is to roll that into uh, a new agreement. And uh, the, the contract pricing that we've um, worked our numbers on the savings over the five-year term is based on December 1st and beyond of 2010, or from the time of the contract being awarded, uh, because what I heard is is that up until December of 2010, these this contract pricing that you've come to terms with may be renegotiated. Um, no, we had the opportunity. We gave uh, the proponents an opportunity to uh, uh, recommend a pricing model moving forward from December 31st. Uh, we were basically uh, trying to compare the pricing, uh, giving every 194 items, everyone gave us the net price on. Uh, we added it all up and then uh, found out what the total cost was of those 194 items and then we compared them uh, to all seven vendors. So why do we need a December 1st, 2010 option if the 194 items have been put through the scrutiny over five years. Uh, we wanted to, basically we wanted to, uh, a mechanism to uh, uh, evaluate the pricing and uh, this is what we had come up with was a firm pricing. Uh, given we know the market conditions uh, can go up and down, we wanted a, a firm uh, pricing model in place up until December 31st, 2010, and then we wanted a pricing mechanism to carry on for the, the, the next uh, four years. So for the next four years, so in December of 2011, would it be prudent to do the same thing? Your Worship, uh, I think uh, what we're trying to make clear is that after the end of the first year, the pricing model is based on cost plus a markup, and so that will carry on for the remaining four years. So when the process was undertaken to uh, evaluate the <coughs> suppliers, then everybody understood that it would be cost plus on all those items? Uh, no, we ask them to make a recommendation on the model that they would be putting forward. Some did recommend a cost plus. Some recommended a list less model. I think, and my last question, Your Worship, um, we heard from one of the delegations that this is uncharacteristic in this industry to have five-year contracts. Um, I have to make the assumption that any time that we're trying to represent the citizens, that every decision that we're making is in the citizens' best interest. And I read through the um, report that this is uh, one of the major um, reasons for us to enter into such a, a term. Um, for me, whether that be a one-year or a five-year or a 50-year or whatever the case, I would assume that we're always adopting that that principle in doing what is the best interest in every aspect of the city's operations. So is this a philosophical shift, a fundamental shift to how we are going to proceed with tendering of this and other items that we purchase? 
Mm-hmm. Help me respond to here. Uh, Your Worship, um, we do do this five-year tender in other areas of purchasing, um, for example, in office supplies. Uh, the staff in their evaluation believe that they can save money for the taxpayers by this longer-term relationship. That saving is documented through the pricing and through savings in administration. So even though it's not... Um, popular in the waterworks industry at this time, we believe it will become popular and we believe that we're at the forefront of trying to do your business by saving the taxpayers money and operating the city as cheaply and effectively as possible. And we will be able to measure what in over the course of this 60 months if that is in fact the case? Well, absolutely. If uh, we find that this isn't uh, in the taxpayer's interest, we'll be uh, making uh, recommended changes in the future. Thank you. Council Oldham. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship. I have a question for our delegation. Hmm. Um, I've uh, heard your comments now uh, three times, and uh, you've always made me think about what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, would it be correct to characterize your comments as uh, applying primarily to the process by which this contract was set up and awarded and evaluated? Totally. Totally. Totally to the process. To the process of the percentage of the evaluation. You can weight something that someone will actually receive a better percentage than mm-hmm. someone that doesn't have the same capability. But the effort may be higher with the company that hasn't got that same capability than the one that is being weighted. My whole concern is that this process is weighted. In some areas, little four-star would compete. In some areas, we don't have multi-branches. But if we carry a million dollars and Corex carries a million dollars in four branches, Mm -hmm. we have a million dollars. They have a million dollars. Okay, I know this is going to be a difficult question, but I need to ask it. Um, if, uh, if, If you're concerned exclusively about the process, then the outcome is is doubtful and questionable no matter what the outcome is. So would you be standing here questioning the process if it had generated you as the recommended bidder? Um, as being in the industry for 30 years, my philosophy always has always been, 15 years with our company, we need to share infrastructure business up and down Vancouver Island. I go into work charts on this island where they would like to give me more business in Courtney and more business in Camp River. And I say, your brass, your galvanized, your, your, your regular fittings, you should be buying locally. We're, we're not out for everything that a municipality has. There's seven people trying to compete for the city's dollars. So if you have a problem and you can't get something for number one, you can go to seven people to get what you require for your infrastructure. Infrastructure is not something that you can put a price tag on when you have a failure. You need everybody on your side. So so you're saying that even if you had been awarded the contract, you would be here talking to us about this? You wouldn't have been awarded the contract with this weighted system. When when we seen it, it was like, this isn't going to happen. After we see the evaluation. Okay, so my final question is, uh, when you put in a bid on this tender, you knew what the terms were, you knew it was five years, you knew what the uh, criteria would, that were uh, listed there would be applied. If you thought that was so flawed, why did you put in a bid? Because we've been to council. Why did I put a bid in? Yes. It was not until after the evaluation when I asked twice via email to cities city uh, staff at the purchasing yard what the questions were that we were asked. I finally got my answer back after it was emailed to the wrong email address. It was sent to the wrong leoncakeatelus.com. I have persistently asked the city twice to answer the questions of what five questions did you ask us. It Mm -hmm. went to the wrong email address. I find that quite odd. All I am saying is that in our process, If you ask five questions and you gave us 10% for those questions, and we don't know whether the conversation was about a mountain bike frame or was it about a gasketed Y, that's 10%. What happens if I was out only by 9%? Mm -hmm. Did I get 10%? Did I get 6%? How do I know what I answered when I don't know what the question is? Okay, well, uh, does staff have any comments about uh, that? I thought we remedied that uh, business about the email. 
just to, for the public record, I certainly apologize for the fact that we sent the email to the wrong address. I believe it was an innocent mistake, and we corrected it as soon as we knew. So I apologize for that, Mr. Cake. One of the things that uh, Mr. Cake doesn't know, uh, because we haven't released the information because we think it's private uh, and not private and owned by the people that submitted it is the results of the evaluation and even though Mr. Cake criticizes certain areas he may well have scored well in those and uh, and so but it's difficult for us to comment specifically but the aggregate score is what's important and in this case Corex came out in the aggregate even though some of the issues that Mr. Cake is concerned about he actually was rated very well. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you, sir. I see no further questions. Move to delegation. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The next delegation um, is uh, Mr. Darrell Wright. Um, Mr. Wright, welcome, sir. Again, you have up to 10 minutes. I'd like to once again thank Council and uh, Your Worship for the opportunity to speak. This is the third time I've spoke in front of Council. Um, a lot of the issues that I've raised um, you're well aware of, so I don't feel I need to go over them again and, and hammer on them. Um, my concern is in regards to the um, selection criteria. Um, my biggest concern was the 5% um, that we were not um, issued in regards to not, the, uh, not disclosing our financial statement and our annual sales. I'm with a letter from our bank stating our um, financial uh, stability and that if there was any questions there was a contact person for them to call if that was something that they you know they were questionable and um, our standard shared on um, our bank was not called um, so I feel there was five percent that we were not given um, we were told we were very close to Corex um, in score um, so that five percent I don't know of course um, how close we were so that may or may not have made us the successful bidder um, a question was raised as to why question it now um, of course this time I'm questioning it because that five percent may have given me the opportunity to supply the tender um, there's one other item I'd like to bring up um, in the executive summary on page 125, it stated that the request for proposal indicated any award would be made to the highest ranked proponent for a five-year term. Yet in the request for proposal document provided to the bidders, it states City of Nanaimo reserves the right to accept or reject any or all of the proposals made. The lowest price proposal will not necessarily be recommended or awarded the contract. I'm assuming the wording in the request for proposal um, is the correct statement and the other in the executive summary would be incorrect? Does staff want to make comment? It's confusing because even though the contract documents say that the city reserves the right to award this contract in the manner it sees fit, the challenge is, is that the courts don't always respect that if they believe that council or the city has been arbitrary in its enforcement of that. For example, if the city was to bring in new criteria, for example, a local preference criteria which wasn't in the uh, original terms, then the judge would likely say that you can't use that as a reason to reject the bid. Uh, however, if, for example, the bids were all over budget and you just didn't have the money, the courts would probably decide that you can reject them all, and that is a legitimate reason. So it is confusing, even though that wording is in there, it is not always something the judges will support, uh, and that it has to be read uh, carefully and in context with all the other, uh, <coughs> all the other issues. Um, one more item I'd like to bring up uh, is uh, staff's recommendation to council is two options. Award the um, it has recommended or cancel the competition. Um, Andrew Sherritt Limited urges the council to cancel the competition. Um, the first and foremost reason is the pricing model used called the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. 80% um, of your volume is derived from 20% of your items ordered. That leaves 80% of the items unquoted and potentially unprotected. Um, it would be more prudent to in a situation where you're going to be asking someone to hold pricing for five years um, to get a quote on everything you buy. 
Um, when we uh, bid on a, uh, a job to a private company, um, they give us a complete takeoff of the job. They don't give us 20% of the job and just trust us on the other 80% that we're going to give them a far fair price on it. They, they deal with profit and loss and of course, you know, and here we're talking about tax dollars, so um, I feel it's very important. Um, I just wanted to clarify too, the executive summary lists the following as features offered by Corex, but it did not really state that it was um, offered by the second and third place bidders as well. I felt this should be pointed out. Um, fleet of trucks, I mean, I was listing the tr trucks at our branch in Nanaimo. Um, we have other trucks on the island amongst our company. We could list a lot of, a lot of trucks that would be a very huge fleet. Um, technical training, we offer that as well. 24-7 emergency response. Um, I'm not sure how you can do that out of Duncan if the water main ruptures and the city doesn't have that part on the shelf. I'm not sure how it, an emergency can be solved quickly with a you know an hour and 20 minute drive to get here. Um, it was mentioned by one of the staff in regards to the 2% discount. Um, Andrew Sherritt Limited has always paid that to the city. Should the city pay within terms? Um, we have always paid that to the city and all of our, our account customers do get 2% if they pay within uh, the 15th of the month following. Um, the city of Nanaimo spent over $500,000 with us last year and if they had paid within terms they would have got that 2% which is of course considerable savings. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure how they've, they've paid so I'm not sure whether they had turned or not collected that 2%. Um, there was a statement made by Mr. Bordian in regards to District of North Cowichan. Um, just for the record, I did not state that District of North Cowichan offered preference to local suppliers. Um, I was asked by Councillor Paggi if uh, we bid outside the NIMO, and North Cowichan was one of the item, one of the communities that I'd mentioned that we bid into. And a hypothetical question was raised that if they had a preference for dealing local, you know, would that upset me? in a bit and that's that's what I was addressing and why while it would not make me happy would not upset me that would just be the way it is you know that if, if the bidding was that tight and it was given to a local supplier to keep tax dollars within that community I could understand that um, I would mention again to council that a company located in the city of Nanaimo 600 meters from the public's works yard could offer a far better service to their daily and emergency needs and more efficiently than one based in a city an hour away. Not to mention keeping the city of Nanaimo <coughs> tax dollars within Nanaimo. A five-year contract is something untried and is too long and is uh, and this idea should be retendered for a one-year um, time frame and evaluated to see if any savings are offered in this type of uh, um, proposal. Uh, that's that's everything I have. Okay, we do have questions for you, sir. Uh, Councillor Patchy. Thank you, Worship. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Wright. And thank you for bringing up the fact that uh, um, the answer that you gave uh, that I asked you on an earlier occasion about buying locally. I don't think there's anybody on this council <clears throat> who would not prefer to buy locally. Uh, I think that's, th that's a given. But for the record, I think it's also very important for us to state that Nanaimo is an area that uh, produces goods and services that go well beyond our borders, and uh, we don't want to get into... Uh, a trade uh, barrier type of thing, uh, if that's the right way of, of, of calling it. But uh, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, final question for staff, if I may, Your Worship. Um, when someone is unable or refuses to produce a financial statement, how <clears throat> is that indeed 5% on this evaluation? Um. Your Worship, um, I just want to just explain uh, how this went. Um, just to say that the city was not contacted by any vendor at any time during the proposal process to request clarification regarding the city's expectation of the financial section. No concerns were expressed at the pre-bid meeting or during the month the proposal call was open. A statement from their bank was not included with their proposal. And yes, the score, uh, achievable score on that rating was five. Thank you. Councillor Johnson. Thank you, Your Worship. My, my question was about the financial portfolio as well. And uh, the question I was going to ask of staff was if they, you had received 
the information regarding their financial portfolio, would that have made the difference on his rating? Would the 5% have been the, the difference between being awarded or not? Um. Your Worship, um, the answer to that is no. It wouldn't have uh, taken them over the edge. Um, I, I do want to say, though, that it's not possible for the city to consider late information from bidders uh, other than as laid out in the process. And so uh, that would be a privilege that would then have to be granted to everybody. Uh, so um, that's another fact. Are we finished? Councillor Johnson, yes, are you, you finished? Um, okay, Councillor Kip. Um, yes, well, I've asked a question about this uh, corporate rebate. How long has Andrew Sherritt been in business in Nanaimo? Uh, since 1956. Okay, how many employees do you have? Uh, 28 at the moment. And, okay. Um, and were you over the understanding, too, that the referenced $100,000 savings with that rebate program that that was available to you to offer your 2% that you normally do? Did you offer that in your contract? Uh, yes, we did. We did put that out in our proposal. That's uh, a part of any any account customer that we have. If they pay within terms, it's an incentive for customers to pay. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Wright. I, I think that concludes it. Uh, I see no further questions. Thank you, sir. Is, is, your Honor, may I ask one question of the staff in regards to the financial statement? Well, I don't know that we want to get into that. Uh, you know, did, did you not ask them before tonight's meeting, or is it? Well, uh, he did say that he didn't receive us a letter from our bank, but it was included in our in our tender. There was a document from the Bank of Montreal uh, with contact information, and if it didn't show or didn't arrive with our tender, then it was uh, that, submitted. That concerns me. Ask him later. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll accept that. Thank you, sir. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Um, this does come up later in the agenda. Vote on the of the delegation. Yep. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, the next delegation is Mr. Darren Moss, uh, Tetonica Management Incorporated. Um, you have up to 10 minutes, uh, sir. And uh, this is to do with an ammo train station rehabilitation project. You only have up to 10 minutes, you know, I mean, how much water do you need here? <laughs> Lots of whistle. <laughs> oh, I Lots see. Of whistle. <laughs> okay. Your Worship, Welcome, members Darren. of council, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak this evening. <clears throat> My name is Darren Moss, and I'm the director with Tectonica Management. We're working with the Island Corridor Foundation as their project and construction manager on the rehabil rehabilitation of the Nanaimo train station. Excuse me. Later in this evening's agenda, you guys will have the opportunity to uh, review and vote on the heritage alteration permit for the station. I'm here to introduce the project to those of you who don't, haven't seen it before, to give you a bit of an update as to where it stands, and to answer any questions you guys may have. Uh, over the last two years, our project team has worked to develop a project that not only restores the heritage facade of the building, but also rejuvenates the life and energy that used to exist in the original station. Um, our vision is to create an active commercial hub that welcomes rail traffic to the city and also encourages the downtown core one more block up Fitzwilliam. I'm happy to be here tonight to announce that through the efforts of the young professionals of Nanaimo, the DNBIA, and the support of the city, the city itself, we now have funds in place to move forward with the construction of Phase 1A of the station. Phase 1A will begin this week. Um, efforts are underway to get the sites going and it will entail basically the abatement work of the station, the lift of the station, the excavation, the new foundation, and the structural framing for the new station. This is an, an immense step forward for the project and wouldn't have been possible without the support of yourselves, the staff, and the local community who have stepped up in a very big way to show their support for this project. Looking ahead to the second and final stage, we're almost there. We have a little ways to go yet, and the young professionals of Nanaimo are organizing some very fun, very creative fundraisers to close the gap. We are also, we also have a very strong commercial tenant who wants to open a traditional Irish restaurant in the station. Their vision is fine Irish cuisine 
with live entertainment will be a very good fit for the station, drawing people back to the station and welcoming visitors to our city. Via Rail's passenger service and waiting area and ticket sales will be the final, final piece of the puzzle that complements the entire lease space of the station, filling it. After the fundraising, fundraising gap is closed and the commercial mortgage is secured, the final pieces will be in place for a successful completion of this of the rehabilitation project. <coughs> I want to thank city staff again for the support of the project. Thank city staff, sorry, the council and city staff for their support to date and hope to look forward to your support in the future. We're excited to move this construct into the construction phase and uh, you guys will be seeing lots of it in the paper and I'm sure lots of people will be walking by to see it. So I'm here for any questions or anything I might be able to clarify for yourselves. Okay, um, there are some questions. I might just make a comment. Mr. Moss, thank you very much for the presentation. And, uh, you know, uh, congratulations to you and the young professionals for all the work to, that you've done to date on it. And uh, it's a wonderful project. Uh, and I can't uh, say enough about it. And I do appreciate what you and your company have done to get it this far along. First uh, is Councillor Patchy. Thank you, Worship. Thank you, Mr. Moss. Uh, phase one will be finished when? How long will it take? Uh, phase 1A, sorry for the clarification, but Phase 1A had to be reduced a little bit to match the funding um, from the original Phase 1, which included the, the exterior windows and doors being complete. So Phase 1 should be about three months in its completion. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Unger. Uh, can you give us an idea of the total cost of the entire project? Yes. So the budget for the project was $2.32 million dollars of which there, I believe, is a fundraising gap of $100,000, and then we're done. So there's a commercial, fund commercial mortgage that's a piece of that for about $1.1 million. The rest has been raised through via rail support, in-kind donations, and donations from the city. Thank you. Well, wow, that's an incredible uh, undertaking because, uh, you know, it, it, it's nice to have the history. I think it was 1920, wasn't it? It was rebuilt um, after a fire, and uh, it's part of our heritage, and I think it's uh, it's just a wonderful uh, thing to be, to be preserved. And, again, I thank you for, for that. Now we have one more question. Councillor Johnstone. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you for your presentation, and um, I'm delighted that you're having an Irish restaurant in the, in the uh, new station. And how many seats would that... Be how many seats? They're actually predicting about 135 seats. Excellent, thank you. My pleasure. I guess the one thing that keeps coming to mind: um, Will there be a liquor license involved in this process? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I believe they're going for a food primary. Irish license. whiskey only. I understand. A fine collection of whiskey and great beer. Oh, great! Move we'll the uh, Move. Is there a seconder? Second. Second motion. All in favor? Thank you, Mr. Moss, and good luck with your project. Um, the next delegation um, is from uh, Rimini Town Homes, Mr. Carmelo. And I might get you to give me a hand with the surname. Um, Mediozo, am I close? Sorry? Mediozo. Am I, are, are we close? To, <laughs> Mr. Gray, I can handle that one a little easier. That. <laughs> No, I, I'm You'll be speaking to us in English, I assume, will you? That, uh, yeah. Thank you for having me here tonight. My name is Rob Gray. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Carmelo Mariazzo and the Rimini uh, development at 50 Mill Street. And I don't really have much more to add uh, in the report uh, that's been filed for, um, on his behalf is that we're looking for a variance on the fence height between 50 Mill Street and 58 Mill Street. And it was some unexpected um, uh, grading uh, design problems that arose uh, and trying to meet the needs of the neighbor at 58 Mill Street. The report is pretty self-explanatory. And uh, the developer, Carmelo, is stuck on the BC Ferry, so he asked me to step in at the last minute. So I'm the marketing agent for the property. Okay. So I'll do the best I can to answer any questions you may have. Well, I think it's basically a retaining wall and a fence combination unit that, you, that uh, we're looking at here on this project. Mm -hmm. um, well, you might get off light. I don't see any questions on uh, this point. So... Um, we'll proceed to the delegation. Move and second it. All in favor? Carried. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Well, thank that you. was short and painless, I trust, was it? That, uh, thank you. 
Okay, um, proclamations um, that 2010 May 16th to 2010 May 22nd is Local Government Awareness Week in the City of Nanaimo. That uh, 2010 May 16th to 2010 May 22nd is National Public Works Week in the City of Nanaimo. That the month of May is Missing Children's Month and that 2010 May 25 is Missing Children's Day in the City of Nanaimo. That 2010 May 29th is the Day of the Honeybee in the City of Nanaimo. And that 2010 June 05 is Access Awareness Day in the City of Nanaimo. And I so proclaim. Uh, we'll move into um, Commission Reports. The Parks, Recreation, and Culture Commission minutes of the, of the meeting. Move the meeting. Minutes. Is there a seconder? Thank you. All in favor? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, Parks, Recreation, Culture Commission, Grade 5, Get Active Program. Um, the Commission recommendation to Council endorse the Grade 5 Get Active Program, giving Grade 5 students uh, from Nanaimo and contributing uh, areas free admission to drop into swimming, skating, and gymnasium based activities for the 2011 school year. Tell them all. Seconder? All in favor? Opposed? Uh, we're going to Parks, Recreation, and Culture Commission Travel Assistance Application, the Nanaimo Diamond Synchronized Swim Club. It's the Commission's recommendation that Council approve uh, the application for a travel system grant for the Nanaimo Diamonds uh, Synchronized Swim Club in the amount of $500. The application meets all the grant criteria. Second. So and Second. Seconder. And Councilor Johnson, do you want to speak to that as well? No, that's fine. Okay. Sure. Move and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, we're going to development services um, in the uh, blue section of the agenda, RA 235, 3443 Meadow Lane Road, and 3360 and 3370 Hammond Bay Road, RA 236, part of Meadow Lane Road, and part of 3312 Hammond Bay Road. Um, PNAC's recommendation at its uh, meeting of uh, February 16, 2010, that PNAC recommended the Council approve the application. Staff recommendation that Council receive, number one, receive the uh, report re uh, pertaining to zoning amendment bylaw 2010 number 4000.475 which is RE 235 which is presented under the bylaw section of the agenda and two receive the report pertaining to zoning amendment bylaw 2010 number 4000.476 RE 236 which is presented under the bylaws section of the agenda and three direct staff to register a covenant to secure upgrades to the Hammond Bay Road Stevenson Point intersection rainwater pre-development pre flows erosion and sediment control plan and community contribution I'm sorry recommendations one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Moves and seconded. All in favor? Uh, uh, oh, are you on there now? Well, I just, I was oh, I just looked. I didn't see a name there. Now suddenly it's appeared. Councillor Beswick. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a question. This is the, to staff, this is a first phase um, zoning amendment, uh, given that there's a comprehensive 32 plus acre project of which this is the first uh, does, it, does this apply to the entire project or does this apply to the first phase of the project? Yes, uh, Your Worship, uh, just to refer Council to pages 53 and 54 of their agenda packages, it's not so much a first phase, it's a, an adjustment to the zoning and which por portions of the parcel are under certain zoning. In the northern, uh, on page 53, the northern portion of the site currently is RS1 zoned and they're moving that into the steep slope zone, the RS7. And the other part of this is the... Um, there are two parcels which are going to be rezoned for um, more of a um, four-story apartment style building as opposed to what would be allowed under the RS7. But it's not tied to a phasing, it's tied to adjusting different parts of the site to different zones. Thank you. Councillor Batchy. Thank you, Worship. Um, on this particular 1235 and in the subsequent 1237 and 238, um, traffic issues have been expressed by neighborhood associations and, and residents. Uh, this one uh, has a total of 231 units, if I'm not mistaken. The next one will have three commercial units, eight residential. The next one will have 18 multiplex, uh, multi uh, purpose uh, family residences. How does all this fit in with the traffic on Hammond Bay? Uh, Hammond Bay Road is designated as a major collector route. Um, there is going to be a traffic signal uh, installed as part of this development at the intersection of Nottingham Drive and Hammond Bay Road. Um, 
as Hammond Bay is the major uh, collector through this area, or, or sorry, I should use the term arterial through the uh, area, um, traffic is expected to f uh, flow from the neighborhood out onto Hammond Bay and then either north or south along that route. Maybe I could rephrase my question. Can Hammond Bay handle all that traffic? Um, answer that as well and, and, and just to draw council's attention to the later on in the agenda uh, where there is a tender for Hammond Bay Road road improvements and uh, that's further up at Friar Tuck where it uh, goes up to Departure Bay and this is the first phase of a longer term project to improve what, uh, Hammond Bay Road all the way from Departure Bay uh, through to uh, close past Piper's Lagoon. So um, I think there are going to be uh, increased traffic on Hammond Bay Road and the uh, work that is being proposed is the response to that. Thank you. Um, Councillor Johnstone. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, the community contribution is uh, $60,000, as I understand, $60,000. Have we discussed with the Century Holdings whether they would be willing to sweeten the pot and include uh, playground equipment to enhance the amenity? I think the, the intention of Century Holdings is um, uh, to have discussions with the neighbourhood as to what they would like to see that money go towards. Thank you. Sure. Okay, Councillor Bestwick. Uh, thank you, Worship. Just um, in, in light of the fact that you note there will be a, a, a light installed for uh, alternative traffic calming, is there enough room to have something other than a set of traffic lights there? So a circular traffic calming like a roundabout option or roundabout or whatever they're called? Um, at this point, that has not been discussed. The approach had been to uh, install a, a traffic signal. Um, the um, right-of-way for Hammond Bay Road along much of its length is, is fairly narrow, although at this point it is relatively flat, and we're, we, being the city of Nanaimo, our property owner on the opposite corner. It's the site of the, the new fire hall, uh, fire hall number f four. So um, I suppose there is a possibility of having those discussions. Number five. Number five, sorry, yes. Uh, is, is there then opportunity for consideration of such a traffic calming roundabout? Uh, yes, there is. Thank you. Councillor Patchy. Thank you, Worship. I forgot to ask Mr. Tucker another question um, when I asked if Hammond Bay Road could, could handle all this traffic. As you know, it ends up on Departure Bay Road, and the, the stretch from Hammond Bay Road to well beyond the beach is a, is a voluntary 30-kilometer uh, speed zone. How does that figure in with... Uh, Hammond Bay <coughs> being a, a you know very busy road, that that traffic doesn't flow at some point. It comes to a stop, doesn't it? Or it slows down considerably. Um, it, as the city manager has already explained, there's been a considerable study of Hammond Bay as a as a traffic route. Um, the options are fairly limited in, in that area because of the nature of the topography and um, previously there was consideration of another north-south route linking the northern portion of Hammond Bay to the southern. So th the expectation is that traffic volumes will increase and there will be further congestion along those routes. Okay, thank you. Okay, I see no further questions. Um, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, item 11B, OCP uh, 55, RA 237, part of 3312 Hammond Bay Road. PNAC's recommendation that at it, its meeting on February 16, 2010, PNAC recommended that Council consider approving official community plan amendment application OCP 55 and rezoning application RA 237 for a local service center at 3312 Hammond Bay Road. Staff recommends uh, recommendations that Council 1 received the report pertaining to the official community plan amendment uh, bylaw 2010 number 6500.009 OCP uh, 55 which is presented under the bylaw section of the agenda and 2 uh, received the report pertaining to zoning amendment bylaw 2010 number 4000.477 which is RE 237 which is presented under the bylaw section of the agenda and 3 direct staff to register a covenant to secure upgrades to the Hammond Bay Road Stevenson Point Road intersection um, use uh, restrictions, uh, rainwater pre-development flows, erosion sediment control plan, and the community contribution. 
Move the uh, three recommendations. Second a motion. Okay. Discussion, Council. Uh, okay, sorry, Council Holden first, and then Council Sherry. And I would just point out, to Your Worship, that this is an example of an official community plan amendment. Um, bylaw change and a zoning amendment bylaw change coming forward at the same time in order to expedite the application. Thank you. Councillor Sherry. To you, Mr. Chairman, to staff, uh, this local service centre, have uh, we have uh, restrictions of hours of service on this development? Um, that's not in the current package, but that is certainly something that could be discussed with the applicant. Well, I, I just bring to your attention, as uh, it's not that long ago, we were dealing with a business in downtown Departure Bay with hours of operation, and they were put restrictions, and also that same restriction was uh, put on the northern end of Hammond Bay Road as it relates to that business. And it was my understanding at the time that we couldn't be site specific, that we were area in general. And uh, I think that uh, uh, we need to review that. And if there's a change, then uh, I think uh, uh, if we're going to change those hours of operation, then you're going to have to consider uh, the conditions that you put on those uh, businesses that are under restriction now. Thank you to Councillor Sherry for reminding us. We'll review that. <laughs> Councillor Holden. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have anything to say. Okay, and Councillor Patchy, you're off too? Or um, you have one more? A concern was expressed by the Native Association about a neighbourhood pub. And when I look at um, page 67 of your report, there's a whole uh, long list of permissible uses in a C4 zone. Does that mean that a pub can not happen there? Um, in item three of the staff recommendation is to include um, a covenant to uh, impose uh, restrictions on the land uses that can be on that site, and that would be included in those use restrictions. Thank you. Okay. Um, it's been moved and seconded. No further discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The... Um RA 238, uh, 6090 Hammond Bay Road, PNAX recommendation that is meeting on February 16, 2010. Recommend that Council approve the application. Staff uh, recommendation that Council 1 receive the report pertaining to zoning amendment bylaw 2010 number 4000.474, which is presented under the bylaw section of the agenda, and 2 direct staff to register a covenant to secure the density restrictions, alternate road work, no gating, rainwater, pre development flows, and erosion and sediment control plan and community contribution. Moved, second, moved and seconded. Uh, discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. Um, application for a temporary uh, change for a liquor or food primary license. Uh, we're dealing with item uh, D now. Uh, staff recommendation that Council endorse the proposed liquor license application process for a temporary change to a liquor or food primary license described in the report and as outlined on Schedule A and 2. Receive the report pertaining to development services, department fees, and charges amendment bylaw 2010 number 7016.02, which is presented under the bylaw section of the agenda. Move item one and two. Is there a seconder? Move and seconded. I see some discussion. Councillor Unger. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, if you wanted to clarify, this is a change of process only, not approving any particular license, uh, and that such applications would then be approved by staff. Am I correct? That's correct, Councillor Unger. Thank you. I think maybe, um, Mr. Tucker, there are some uh, further qualifications for uh, staff making the recommendation. They could only do it up for a, a certain amount of time. Um, do you want to just touch on those quickly for us? Um, the purpose of this is for temporary changes to hours uh, for for-profit uh, special events such as a restaurant or bar wishing to um, hold an event say for Halloween or Valentine's Day or, or some or New Year's something like this at the moment um, the special occasion licenses which are not for profit events are signed off by the general manager of development services the intent is to allow for temporary changes of hours for the for 
for-profit operations that would also be signed off after referral to establishments like the RCMP to ensure that uh, there are no problems with the premises. So it's to establish a process by which uh, staff could consider those temporary changes. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. Councillor Sherry. Well, Mr. Chairman, I have no problem in staff bringing forward those reports. But uh, I have a problem with the suggested fee. Because where do you get uh, all this work being going to the police back and forth and that for $100? I think we better get back into reality and what the, it would cost you just to go to visit a lawyer. Never mind. And I think uh, staff should review uh, the fee structure as it relates to this item. Valid point. Okay. Question on the uh, motion. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Um, we're going into uh, section DP uh, 643 50 Mill Street um, that council issued a development permit uh, number DP 643 at 50 Mill Street for the fall, with the following variance rather height uh, fence uh, west property line the maximum fence height including a retaining wall shall not exceed 2.4 meters 7.8 feet um, in the side yard the proposed fence height including the retaining wall is 4 meters or 13 feet a proposed variance of 1.6 meters or 5.3 feet Seconded. Uh, Councilor Sherry, you no, you can't hold him. Your Worship, just a point of privilege. The executive summary on uh, page um, 84 refers to the application coming from a company called Hold'em Developments Incorporated. Uh, <laughs> which is want to explain that uh, that is a Burnaby company, which is where I come from, but it's a company that's been named after the avenue of that name, uh, not me or anybody in my family. I just wanted to explain that because of the oddness of the name. Okay. <laughs> oddness. I wouldn't call it an oddness of the name, but anyway. I don't have a conflict of interest, is what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. We'll go into DVP uh, 154 at 2290 Labio Road. Staff recommendation the council direct staff um, to proceed with the required statutory notification for development variance permit number DVP 154 for 2290 Labio Road. Move the staff recommendation. Move and second. No questions. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Move into HAP 24 at 329 um, Selby Street. Staff recommendation the council issue a heritage um, alteration permit for the rehabilitation and construction of the ENN railway station at 321 uh, Selby Street. On Move. behalf of the Heritage Advisory Committee, Mr. Chairman, I would uh, move to recommend. Second a motion. Okay, good, sir. And uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, the uh, unresolved building deficiencies notice untitled, which is section 5-7. It's requested that council hear, council hear anyone wishing to speak with respect to unresolved building deficiencies for the properties listed below. And the staff recommendation of the council by resolution instruct the director of legislative services to file a bylaw contravention notice uh, respecting the properties listed below at the land title and survey authority in British Columbia under the section 5-7, the community charter. 12310 Ross Town Road, illegal construction, finished basement to include additional dwelling units. Is there anyone in attendance here that would like to speak to matters related to 2310 Ross Town Road? Uh, the next item is uh, Unit 102 at 1930 Island Diesel Way, illegal construction under slab plumbing. Is there anyone in attendance that would like to speak to matters related to that address, 102 1930 Island Diesel Way? Yes. You can come to the microphone. And if we can get your name and address for the records and your affiliation or your relationship with this address. Yes, my name is Mike Stone. Uh, my address is 740 Begby Street. And um, uh, my relation is we're, we're the new purchasers of the building. And um, the, the gentleman we purchased the building from um, in our agreement was to finish the under slab plumbing and the demising wall. Um, a few days before we took, uh, we, it was, went through the courts and we got possession. Um, he had finished that work and then it came to our attention after we had purchased that, uh, that a permit was not applied for. And um, so we plan on resolving it with, through the city. We've been speaking with Tom Weinrich and uh, just wanted to say that we're going to have it all cleared up and, uh, and have new plans drafted up and before we go with construction. Okay. Um, the, the problem being that uh, under Section 5.7 of the Act, it, it's just notice on title. So um, 
you know, there's, there's not really a big onus on you. How long will it take you to get to all the debt? I think we could probably have it done, uh, resolved within two weeks to a month. Well, that should work within the window. There's 30 days involved, so... Um, Excellent. Thank you very much. I, I wouldn't, yeah, but get at it. <laughs> you, <laughs> okay, thank you very much for attending. And uh, the last one is uh, item 35405, Big Bear Ridge, illegal construction, interior, um, structural and plumbing alterations. Is there anyone in attendance who would like to speak to matters related to 5405, Big Bear Ridge? Move the staff recommendation as it relates to the three items. Second the motion. Okay, all in favor? Can I, uh, sorry? Okay. I think maybe Mr. Seward had a comment to make about uh, number two. Yes, Your Worship, just a point of clarification is uh, a Section 57 notice. There is not a 30-day uh, notice period. Uh, we would proceed immediately if that's what Council's recommendation is. Okay. On removal orders that you hear a number before Council, uh, yes, the applicant is given 30 days. So the Council can either uh, give an extension for the individual or the delegation, or we will proceed with the notice on title, and he can apply for it to be removed once the construction is completed. That is correct. Okay, so um, Councillor Sherry, did you have a comment? Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, we brought f these items forward in the past, and they ended up with, because we're not going to go and file that notice tomorrow morning, the individual has uh, given notice that he'll be working with staff, and it's been p past practice, and uh, I'd correct me if it's wrong. But uh, they've, we've allowed them to have a little leeway as long as they're active on the problem. Is that correct? Your Worship, normally with a Section 57, no, there's not a, a leeway unless Council uh, directs staff to do so, and we could bring it back for, for at a further Council meeting if uh, the problem has not been rectified. Okay, well then my motion should have been that uh, as it relates to item 1 and 3, and uh, give item 2 an additional 30 days to correct the problem. I second that. Okay, so um, that, um, <coughs> Councillor Holdem, did you want to speak to it as well, or are you? Oh, sorry, no, I was going to. Okay, so um, the motion then is is to apply Section 5.7 on 1 and 3 and defer 2 at this time 30 All, for 30 days. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Um, the uh, item I has been pulled. Item J on city premises 3230 Norwell Drive. It's request the council hearing in which to speak with respect to on premises at 3230 Norwell Drive. Staff are going to the council pursuant to the property maintenance bylaw 1990. And we're fading away here. Um, uh, number 3704 and amendments there too. Direct the owners of 3230 Norwell Drive to remove graffiti from the premises uh, within 14 days or the work will be undertaken by the city's agent at the owner's cost. Um, and before you on the screen, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, okay, uh, let's move and second. All in favor? Opposed? <laughs> Carry. Um, that is unsightly. Unsightly premises at 644 um, Railway Avenue. It's uh, requested the council um, hear anyone wishing to speak with uh, respect to unsightly premises at 644 Railway Avenue. Um, staff are going to use the council pursuant to the da 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 uh, amendments there too. Um, remove a derelict uh, brown gold band, derelict gray car, derelict black car, derelict red car. Well, at least he's not color consistent. Um, household furniture, household garbage, and miscellaneous debris from the premises within 14 days, or the work will, work will be undertaken by the city's agent at the owner's cost. Move the staff recommendation. Before us, so we can see um, all the cars and all the material that's there. Okay. Okay, and uh, all those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Oh. Uh. Dougie Thompson, who we didn't say. Mr. Thompson. Okay, sir. Come to the mic. Welcome. We just need your name and address and your affiliation with the property. Uh, Doug Thompson, um, 644 Railway. Uh, I guess I'm the owner of the property. Um. Uh, basically, I just uh, need more time, but I um, would like to. Uh, um, how it's? I got a couple registered letters, right? As it starts out, and uh, oh, by the way, I uh, I drove here in the derelict black car. It's uh, insured and right outside. Um, <laughs> and uh, basically, I just need time, more time to clean that up. Part of the reason is uh, I had some. Uh, 
never mind unsightly uh, a tenant and I had a problem with the uh, uh, the uh, red zone uh, guys and stuff and uh, mm. so I shut the back suite down kicked everybody out and everything from inside is pretty well outside right now two fridges that uh, the guys are going to pick up and so on and so forth but as soon as the springtime rolled around and there was five uh, realty uh, for sale signs in there here I am so I would already started cleaning up before that by tearing my everything off the roof there was 5.57 uh, tons of stuff that went off the roof so it's just a matter of a huge cleanup undertaking that's already been started and uh, is still going on well you've got 14 days you're going to be able to do it in I, 14 days uh, I, that's why I'm here I'd like to get more time what does that mean? I'd like to request... Um, How much time are you talking about? Is this never-ending? Uh, as or much as I'm given, I guess. A month, at least. Councillor Peggy, did you want to speak on this? Uh, yes, thank you, Worship. Um, oh, Mr. Thompson, in our hey. report here, Ray yes. said this is the fourth complaint that we've had about your property since 2006. Oh, I know the guys, How, yeah. how did you deal with the other three? Well, just like Bill said today, the guy that was taking these pictures, he says, what happened here? You had this place... All clear. You had it spotless back no, here. I'm, I'm asking you how you dealt with the previous three. Cleaned it up. How much time did you have to do that? I asked for more time both times. I think there was only twice, and twice I didn't come, even come here. I just I mean, made, how much time are you talking about? Time. Are we talking about days or weeks here? A uh, month from. Uh, well, Today, I, sure. Frankly, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I, that um, unless someone else wants to make a motion, I would suggest that uh, if this was the first occasion, we might look at it a little differently. But if this is the, if you had four goes of this thing and you're still well, uh, it's no, it's not the same stuff. Well, it's the same problem. That's our concern. It's the same problem, sure. But I mean, I don't think. What if me and you were having a soccer game, and I used two overage players? So all of a sudden you... Wait a minute. You What's this got to do with all the garbage around well, your house? Well, if you drove by my house and decided to make a complaint, you wouldn't even have to answer to the complaint. I think that, that whoever made the complainant should actually mm -hmm. uh, follow it up. Maybe yeah. in two well, or that's three just not weeks to happen. find out... So, you know, what's do we have place um, because this is okay? Totally just wait one. Thing. We've got some people who want to ask you some questions. Councillor Kip. Okay. Um, yeah, Your Worship. Uh, I know it's extenuating circumstances. I'd make a motion that you know I've got 30 days on this event to be cleaned up. Well, is there a seconder for that? Move and second to be given 30 days. Um, all those in favor? Sorry. You had a question as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you said you received some registered letters which would require you to clean up. When did the, what's the date of the first letter? Uh, the 19th of April is dated. So that's, that's, that's the date on it. That's almost a month ago already, so you've had 23 days yeah. already, and, I've and now you want another 30. Over uh, 13,000 pounds of uh, roofing debris and... Uh, stuff like that and I'm driving the derelict black car like I said right outside here with insurance That's got nothing on nothing to do with it and well no but I mean the derelict gray car uh, should be out of there tomorrow actually and uh, time goes on though I don't want to get caught with the 14 day thing here yeah. that was my only yeah. concern Councillor uh, Bestwick um, I seconded this in order to get the opportunity to speak to it and we're really not extending it by 30 days uh, he has 14 so we're extending it by 16 days if the gentleman is here and is true to his commitment to clean this up in 30 days then I am prepared to give this person that opportunity if on the 31st day this stuff isn't cleaned up I hope not to see you back before us asking for an extension no i don't think that would be necessary and that is on the only well you wish not to okay on the motion um all those in favor opposed i see um councillor unger councillor mayor rattan and councillor padgett opposed balance the council in favor so it passes you have 30 days 30 days from uh, today's day Thank you. 
Um, structural removal order, um, illegal suites in a duplex 2310 Ross Town Road. It's requested that uh, Councillor hear anyone wishing to speak with respect to illegal suites at a, in a duplex at 2310 Ross Town Road. Staff recommendation the Council pursuant to section 72 and 73 of the Community Charter order the owners of 2310 Ross Town Road to remove the structure or bring it up to standard within 30 days. Is there anyone in attendance that wants to speak to matters related to 2310 Ross Town Road? Move the staff recommendation. Second. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The um, appointment of bylaw enforcement officer, staff recommendation to the council by resolution appoint Neil Ad Adam Ashman as a bylaw enforcement officer to enforce the provisions of the City of Nanaimo Licensing and Control of Animals Bylaw 1995, number 4923. Move the recommendation. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, the um, expropriation of part of properties required for Bowen Road realignment. Staff recommendation that Council 1 adopt the attached resolution as described in Schedule 1 authorizing the expropriation of Part uh, 1602 Bowen Road. Um, and 2 adopt uh, the attached resolution as described in Schedule 2 authorizing the expropriation of Part 211 Butter Tubs Drive. And 3 adopt the attached resolution as described in Schedule 3 authorizing the expropriation of Part 1 Butter Tubs Drive. And four, adopt the attached resolution as described in Schedule Four, authorizing the expropriation of Part uh, 1097 Bowen Road. Move the recommendation. Moved. Is there a seconder? Moved and seconded. Discussion? Um, seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, move into corporate services. Uh, request for proposal uh, 1003, primary waterworks supplier uh, follow-up report, um, referred from Finance Policy Committee of the Whole Meeting, 2010, May 03. Um, staff recommendation to the Council award request for proposal RFP 1003 to Corex Water Products for a five-year term. Move the staff recommendation. Okay. Second. And move and seconded. Councillor Kip. Um, yes, Your Worship. This um, RFP has troubled me from the onset, and as we have talked about before, I've been troubled with um, uh, how a lot of our different RFPs are written for a number of places. And I've said before, I don't condemn staff for it. They have some policies and some process ideas that they're doing. I have a real concern with this one, as we've heard a number of times the complaints the elimination of business in our community. I've heard savings of $390,000 over the term. It's a $5 million contract with less than a 10% savings, which I call corporate leakage. That's $5 million leaves Nanaimo. This thing about local purchasing, I absolutely believe in local purchasing. And with the way the world economy is going now, with Greece, Portugal, and them lining up, we're still in dire straits. We've got to spend our money locally. Local taxes, subjective determinations that are looked to be object, objective, they really concern me. Um, I even looked in the process itself. I understood there was no questions or queries regarding the process throughout it. I understood from staff today. But I look on page 129. Um, the proposal was put out on page 128 on February 26, site meeting on the 11th. The next day it changed to a five-year clause, something that is unprecedented, something that's all of a sudden new after 30 years, and it really concerns me seeing our water system go out for five years to a company. I don't matter which company it is. We've heard concerns with the references. We've heard concern about sustainability, and we've heard concerns about how the percentages were arrived at. And I don't know whether we are, we're currently looking at how our policy goes together. And I'd love to see this table until we understood our policies better. So I'd like to make a motion to table this until we have our report on our RPF process. Hey, well, some other speakers will come back to that today if you wish to do that. Councillor Bestwick. Thank you, Worship. Uh, I am extremely like-minded to Councillor Kip in his comments, and I would just like to question the staff. We had a staff's recommendation to award or cancel, and or or cancel, not cancel. Um, and then I learnt through the process that. Uh, now that what's taken place and the tenders are open and so on and so forth, that we don't have the ability, uh, apparently, to, counsel, to cancel the 
So we really don't have that option, even though it was a recommendation that we could choose one or the other at a point in time. And w when was that point in time that we lost the ability to cancel this without after it came to us or before it came to us? Worship, we made that um, uh, comment in our report before we had, had, had attained legal advice. And now that we've attained legal advice, uh, we can advise you that that option is not available without risk. So we're really handcuffed, per se. And so I have trouble with that. that do we have an exit option? Do we have an exit strategy? Do we have the ability to alter if at some point throughout the course of the 60 months if we were to approve this? Is there an exit strategy? Uh, yes, there is. In the uh, uh, request for proposal, it is performance-based. If uh, uh, the uh, uh, recommended supplier does not perform to expectations, the, the city has a, uh, a clause to terminate uh, uh, immediately. And what might some of those conditions of performance that would warrant an exit be? Uh, failure to uh, perform from uh, an inventory, a delivery standpoint, a pricing standpoint, um, uh, support standpoint from staff, uh, the things that they've uh, uh, said in their proposal, if they fail to deliver on any of those items, the city has the option to, uh, uh, to cancel uh, immediately. And just my final comment, Your Worship, is that uh, with respect to this being uh, unprecedented in terms of the five, I understand that we have some contracts that warrant or ha that are five-year. Uh, in this particular case, as it relates to the volume of business that's um, done locally, I, I'm not suggesting or advocating that this be uh, local driven only or exclusivity, but I do echo the comments of Councillor Kip that we're talking about a very small margin over the five years of difference and in view of, it, that's number one, in view of that, number two, this isn't suggesting that uh, suppliers from out of town or in town can't deal with out of town businesses and, and so on and so forth. And so I, I resent the, the notion that that might even be a consideration that um, we would become exclusive and deny local business opportunity outside of Nanaimo if we were to uh, be a little bit more preferable to locals. If, if we were talking uh, double triple some absurd amount, then absolutely. But indeed, I don't think that we're talking about big dollars from the tender submitted by the first company that is being recommended to the second and or the third. And when we get into subjective um, evaluations, uh, that is when I think we have to start thinking about local when it's, we're talking subjective. Uh, I will not be supporting staff's recommendation uh, to award this for a five-year term. Okay, Councillor Unger. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I, to support local preference if and when it's possible, because I think local taxpayers should have an opportunity. However, uh, it has been brought to my attention that that is no longer allowed under regulations set by the province. Uh, they had an agreement with Alberta and now they've extended to Saskatchewan. The three western provinces now are open for business without any impediments and having a local preference uh, I ask staff would that be considered one of the things that's not allowed under that trade agreement? 
uh, that's that's what they're trying to eliminate, Your Worship. So uh, legally, we can't do it then. Uh, unfortunately, it's not that simple. Uh, the province has made these agreements with these other provinces, but they haven't yet translated those into law for municipalities. So at this point, it's their strong urging and encouragement. Uh, it's not yet law. It may become law in the future. Okay. And and the other one is uh, this RFP was called by the city evaluated according to the rules set in the RFP and based on the criteria set by the city. Now, if we were to go back, would we expose ourselves to uh, liability? Yes. Thank you. Just one further comment, just has been uh, clarified to me that the process on interprovincial trade, the process for follow-up is based on a complaint basis, and so if there was a complaint, there would likely be an investigation, and I can't predict the outcome. Thank you. Councilor Holden. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> the, uh, uh, on the issue, I'll be supporting the motion. Uh, I just want to point out that we have already approved as a council a review of the uh, process and policy of our uh, tendering activities, and uh, so we will have a chance to debate issues like whether we should have a local purchasing clause in it or whether uh, proximity of the company as we had in this tender would be sufficient. Um, we're going to get a chance to debate all those things. But we have to remember that uh, tendering a contract is a legal process. It does have legal implications. Uh, we have to follow the rules uh, just as clearly as the bidders have to follow the rules. And uh, one of the rules that we have to follow is that we can't add new criteria after the uh, bidding has taken place. Um, so I think we need to proceed here. Uh, we have uh, we had a strong and experienced staff committee of uh, three members working on these tenders. Uh, they were unanimous in spite of coming from different uh, focuses and uh, different backgrounds. They were unanimous in their recommendation to us. Uh, the process uh, certainly appeared to be fair and objective and especially in the sense of the same rules uh, applying to all. Um, and uh, the results of that evaluation was that uh, the tender that's being recommended provided not only best value, but also best price. Um, it's, it's hard to argue with that, and I don't think we would have a, uh, a strong position legally if we rejected this uh, recommendation. And uh, so I am, uh, am supporting it and would be urging support for it. Councillor Sherry. Well, Mr. Chairman, unfortunately, I'm going to have to hold my nose and vote for it for the simple reason of the possible liability that the community would face uh, should the contract not be awarded. And I have pro problems with the process because we got a, a, a signing uh, protocol in the city of who can sign what for a certain dollar value and it comes up to council to sign if it goes over x number of dollars now where in the process does this i mean this contract is being brought to council today for its signature and approval and i find it kind of hard having dealt with contracts in, in the past that staff have done the legwork on these issues come up with a recommendation and before it's broadcast to the community it's presented for in camera for the cam for the council of the day to review and listen to the arguments of, of staff as to why they should approve or disapprove of the contract. So what is the staff's, uh, uh, who has authority to sign uh, 500000 or a million dollars? Your Worship, the approval authority for over $250,000 is council and council alone. And was council given that opportunity? 
uh, uh, to, to me, when we start looking at the bells and whistles of it, uh, of what's in our procedure bylaw and, and what should come before the council, should it be done. But uh, as I say, it's very, very unfortunate, and even the three proponents that we heard this evening. It's an oddity that this thing is going for a five-year as opposed to a one-year contract. And I have, uh, using my mill experience as it relates to purchasing with not only pipes but some of these valves and fittings that these people are going to be supplying to our community, it all depends what the market is, what the petroleum uh, prices are as it relates to plastic pipe, cast iron pipe, your valves, because it goes on your uh, brass and uh, the various components of those uh, commodities, and what grade of, of uh, individual commodity that you're getting. And that is all over the, the map, even in good times, never mind in bad times. And that, But as I say, I'll hold my nose. Okay, Councillor Johnstone. Thank you, Your Worship. And I've listened to all my learned colleagues and, and uh, had difficulty making a decision myself tonight on this one, but I place every confidence in, in our staff and I know that Mr. Felker comes highly recommended and from his previous posting as a, a very knowledgeable purchasing manager. And I, um, I'm, I'm sorry that this is one of your first <laughs> awardings and it, it's caused all this... Uh, Hardship and uh, but and I would prefer that it hadn't been a five-year term, but I'm I'm confident that uh, and I'm happy to hear that being there is an exit strategy in place that if it doesn't work out we'll be able to uh, <coughs> rescind this contract and uh, I will be f supporting this tonight, Your Worship. Um, although I, as I said before, I, I do pr prefer local and. But we are a major region and a large trading region, and it's going to get bigger in the future. So, so tonight I'll be supporting the motion. Okay, thank you. Councillor Patchy. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I've learned a lot in the last couple of weeks, and I want to thank both Mr. Cake and Mr. Wright for having uh, <clears throat> provided some very valuable uh, uh, information and uh, basically teaching us that we can do it a different way and that we should do it a different way. Um, on May the 3rd, uh, we received legal advice that um, puts all sorts on, of doubt uh, what might happen, what might not happen if we resend this or do not award it that is, as it's planned to be awarded. And I'm, I'm not interested in putting the taxpayers of Nanaimo at that kind of a risk. Uh, as much as I regret this, um, I'm going to be supporting this motion. Okay, Councillor Kip. Oh, me again, eh? Mm. Tilma's not binding. I love it when we say, oh, the provincial government wants us to do that when it suits our needs, and then the rest of the time we throw the provincial government and their standards out the window. I'm really disappointed in this, and if I'm going to offend staff, I apologize now. I've lost my democratic oversight on a five-year purchasing policy to three city staff. One that's been here a year, one that's been on the ground for 30 years, and another that's been in purchasing. I'm not even certain how many waterworks people they talk to that are in the ground digging the pipes. But my democratic oversight has been limited, and I'm really disappointed. When and who asked me that I wanted in the last two years that I've been here, or a year and a half, that we should extend our policy to be five-year purchasing? If, if I, am I not involved in that, I asked staff? Because I'm really disappointed that this, all of a sudden, after 30 years, four or five of our businesses are going to be cut out of the equation because of a process of percentages. Three people made a $5 million decision for our community. You talk about risk, and there's a lot, out of 80, 20, there's a hundred and something things that aren't priced that can be very pricey in the water business. Um, changed process right in the middle of it. It was changed from one year to five year. And I hear my council and my peers say, oh, we support local business. And we talk about risk. We talk about policy. And Nanaimo products, if our products aren't any good, no one's going to buy them. 
If they're really good, it doesn't matter how much we buy local. If our products are good, people will buy them. I can't support this on the process and policy and the policy direction of a five-year contract that is new to our community. But I think I'm very limited in my support for my view of this. Thank you for listening. Okay. Councilor McNabb. Well, we beat this up and beat this up and beat this up. And one question I want to ask staff and say a yes or no. If we do not fulfill this agreement with them, we could be sued. Is that correct? Uh, th that's correct. That's my opinion. Thank you. Well, I get, think the point is the potential is there. Um, I've got some concerns myself with it. Um, I, I will be um, supporting uh, the recommendation, but I, I, I do feel that um, uh, we all need to uh, go back. I don't see how we can stop uh, a process now at this late stage um, after the contract has been tendered legally and, and without creating a great deal of, of concern uh, for people who want to tender contracts to the, in the future to the City of Nanaimo. If there's a concern that after the contract um, has been um, awarded, um, it can be overturned this readily. So um, in saying that, I, I do uh, respect uh, the two delegations that came that also uh, put forward uh, um, orders on this. And, and um, I think what we're going to do is take away um, a bit of a lesson with this. And also we're going to uh, sit down as a council and look at the whole process for um, the acceptance of orders in the future. And hopefully we'll uh, be in a position where we won't be faced with this very same situation again. Question. All those in favour? Opposed? I see Councillor Kipp and Councillor Bestrick. Opposed? Bounce the Council in favour. The motion passes. Regional District of Nanaimo Pump and Hall uh, Local Service Amendment. Um, Bylaw number 275.52, 2010. Staff recommendation the Council waive the consent requirements under Section 801.4 of the Local Government Act by consenting to the adoption of Regional District of Nanaimo Pump and Hall Local Service Amendment Bylaw number 2, I'm sorry, say again, 975.52, 2010, and that the Regional District of Nanaimo be notified accordingly. The staff recommendation. Second Moved and seconded. Uh, no discussion. All those in favour? Opposed? Motion carries. Um, UBCM Community Tourism Grant. Staff recommendation that Council support the reallocation of $154,000 of UBCM Community Tourism Grant funding to the purchase uh, uh, to the LED screen uh, score clock in the Nanaimo Aquatic Center. I will strongly support this and I will strongly move it. Okay. And uh, is there a seconder? You, you, you equally as well. Councillor Bestwick, did you have an issue on this? Is Councillor Johnson on there as well? Yes. yes. Would you care to Would you care to go to her first? Is that okay? Um, sure. I'll okay. default to my colleague to the left. Just because it's her birthday, I understand. Councillor Johnstone. Speaking to, well, I, I think this is an excellent move. And uh, we, we uh, as everyone knows, or public may not know, we're hosting the Masters, Canadian Masters Championship R at the end of this that? month. And uh, mm -hmm. this is an absolute uh, necessity to have the score clock. So I welcome the opportunity and thank the uh, government for, for providing us with this grant to allow us to do this, so thank you. Great. That, yeah, it's the UBCM Community Tourism Grant. Uh, Councillor, um, did you want to speak last, or does it matter? No, sure, we have I'll, I'll, Patchy I'll, I'll go last. Here. I'll default to Councillor Patchy as well. Ooh. Okay, highly, highly suspicious. Councillor Patchy. Just a very quick question. Does this sign have any advertising? <laughs> well, that's a question that um, who's going to... Um, Your it's um, a score, primarily a score clock, but it is an LED screen, so it will have the capacity uh, to do any number of things if that's what uh, was desired. Right now, I don't believe there'll be excessive advertising, although maybe sponsors of various meets that'll be recognized, mm -hmm. and that's probably appropriate to do so. And it's inside, right? Yes. Yes. It's good. <laughs> okay, now it's Councillor Beswick. Thank you, Worship. Um, sorry, I couldn't find the staff report. That was why I wished to default. But I, I'm just curious about process. Um, the city was awarded uh, $154,000 to conduct a tourism destination development strategy study. And we decided to uh, I suspect through the body of this report, 
um, do that $154,000 study internally. And I'm not sure, um, and so we're receiving the money from the UBCM to do a study, which we've done in-house, and we're going to transfer that study grant to the purchase of a capital piece of equipment? Is that? Mm -hmm. That's the plan, Your Worship. Yeah. So when we receive funding for projects similar to this one, are we able to take those monies, do the work internally, spend those monies on something that the monies weren't intended to be spent on when we were granted them and make this decision after being awarded the money for a study and to put it into a capital Your piece Worship, of equipment? We don't have the final decision. We're asking council to support the request from the city to have UBCM agree to that. So we're Recommendation that Council support the reallocation of 154000 of UBCM Community Tourism Grant funding to the purchase of the LED screen score clock for Nanaimo Aquatic Centre. And the $154,000 was earmarked for a study. Yes. So that's my question. Yes. And that's the answer, that yes, that's correct. And now we are asking UBCM to support our request to transfer the funds from one project to another. Okay, so it doesn't say that. The council support the reallocation of the hundred fifty four thousand uh, dollars of the UBCM community tourism grant funding to the purchase of the LED. And what if UBCM denies this request? Well, we think with council support that's unlikely. However, if that does happen, then we'll probably come back to you with another option. So just. My last question. So when we are awarded these kinds of dollars, do will we have the ability to come before council and say, we're not going to spend this six figures on a study. We're going to do it internally, and we'll use the money somewhere else. We'll, reallocate, we'll ask for permission to reallocate it somewhere else. Because if we're going to do this here, then I'd like the opportunity for us to have options for future grant funding. So, Your Worship, uh, I just want to comment that there will be options available because assuming these funds are approved, uh, then the funds that have already been designated to pay for this core clock from the city's funds will be available for reallocation and options. Uh, right now, um, my likely recommendation would be to use those funds to fund capital projects at the Nanaimo Aquatic Centre that there hasn't been sufficient money to fund to date, and I can think of a number of energy upgrades that uh, are badly needed, and so we'll uh, likely be uh, seeking or presenting options to Council on how to allocate that funds. So there is city funds allocated to the purchase of this clock? Yes. And we're going to ask for a reallocation of a study dollars to fund this clock. Yes. And then we will have those dollars that we've already allocated to put toward other aquatic center upgrades. Hopefully. Ho hopefully meaning? Hopefully UBCM approves our request and we have the option of reallocating the funding currently uh, made available. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Holdem. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to point out that this could be looked at in an entirely different way. Um, we have earned this grant. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we did the study. We did not hire an outside consultant for a change. And now uh, we have a chance to allocate this to uh, one of our projects and free up that amount of money for anything we want to do. I think it's great. Question. And uh, and I think the project that they have identified is is an extremely good one too, Councillor Sherry. Well, Mr. Chairman, the, the more you go into this thing, it just makes you wonder. I mean, you apply under you're given a reason why you're applying for a project. 
and you get the money and you're supposed to set, spend it on that project. So uh, if we start playing that we are, are doing it internally and then we want to take it and allocate it into uh, another uh, uh, project, I think we're running ourselves a little thin on the ice for the, the deal is what do they really want and how much do they really need when we make these applications. Because part of this, why I supported this thing here, is that they indicated that there's supposed to be a master's meet here. And it was the need for that clock for the master's need. There was no reference made prior to that that we already got that in the budget, no matter what happens with you. Uh, UBCM in their re, uh, allocation or the not. So we're going to spend the money because these things uh, you got to put in order I would imagine uh, in time before you, you get these things up there. So I think we better be very very careful as to exactly when we make applications what the funds are for and those be utilized for the purpose requested. Okay, Councillor Unger. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the concern seems to be over the reallocation. Uh, is this a unique uh, thing that we're doing for the first time, or is this common practice uh, uh, with other projects over a period of time and other communities? Uh, both yes and no. This UBCM funding for uh, economic development is relatively unique. UBCM has only done this in the last few years. Uh, however, um, routinely, um, as projects are um, developed and costs uh, presented in more detail, decisions are made about uh, choices to provide funding for them or to reallocate funds as additional information comes available. So uh, we think we're acting in Council's interest here, uh, making the best use of this money uh, to provide the best value to the taxpayers. So we're not reinventing the wheel? Not in my opinion. Thank you. Okay, I see no other speakers. All those in favour? Opposed? Motion carried. Oh, are you opposed? Okay, so we have, uh, sorry, um, Councilor Bessig opposed, balance of council in favor, the motion passes. Um, the Hammond Bay uh, Road Utility and Road Improvements under Community Services staff recommendation the council award the contract for Hammond Bay Road Utility and Road Improvements to the Low Tender Low Car Industries Incorporated for the low bid of $1,119,484.50. Move the recommendation. Second Move and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Um, the, uh, we move down into the uh, information items. Second the motion. Move and second it. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, reconsideration of bylaws. Uh, Councillor, uh, Acting Mayor, and Councillor John Stone. And happy birthday again. Um, that council, that. Uh, Financial Plan Amendment Bylaw 2010, number 7097.01, to amend Schedule A of the 2010-2014 Financial Plan be adopted. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Opposed? Councilor, uh, sorry, Councilor Sherry opposed. Balance of Council in favor. The motion passes. That tax rates bylaw 2010 number 7103 to fix tax rates upon real property in the City of Nanaimo and to provide for the payment of taxes for the year 2010 be adopted. Second. Moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor? Opposed? Councilor um, Sherry opposed. Balance of Council in favor. It passes. Introduction of bylaws and the introduction of development um, bylaws. Yes, Your Worship, that zoning amendment bylaw 2010 number 400.474 RA 238 1690 Hammond Bay Road to rezone the subject property from single family residential zone RS1 to medium density multiple family residential suburban zone RM5 in order to facilitate a multi family residential development be given. For First reading. Second. And you moved that and it's and moved and seconded. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. That zoning amendment bylaw 2010 number 400.474 be given second reading. Second. 
Moved and second. All in favour? Opposed? Motion carries. That zoning amendment bylaw 2010 number 400.475 RA 235 3443 Meadow Lane Road and 3360 and 3370 Hammond Bay Road to rezone the subject properties from single family residential zone RS1 to steep slope residential zone RS7 in order to incorporate the properties into a comprehensive steep slope development under the R7. RS-7 zone be given first reading. Moved and seconded. All those in favour? Opposed? Motion carries. That zoning amendment bylaw 2010 number 400.475 be given second reading. Moved and seconded. All in favour? Opposed? Carried. That zoning amendment bylaw 2010 number 400.476 RA-236 Dash part of 3355 Meadow Lane Road and part of 3312 Hammond Bay Road to rezone parts of the subject properties from steep slope residential zone RS7 to medium density multiple family residential suburban zone RM5 in order to incorporate increased residential density within the proposed comprehensive steep slope development be given first reading. Second Moved and seconded. Um, all those in favour? Opposed? Motion carries. That zoning amendment bylaw 2010 number 400.476 be given second reading. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favour? Opposed? Carried. That zoning amendment bylaw 2010 number 400.477 RE 237 part of 3312 Hammond Bay Road to rezone part of the subject property from steep sl- zone. Steep Slope Residential Zone RS7 to Mixed Use Commercial Zone C4 in order to incorporate a local service centre within a comprehensive steep slope development be given first reading. Second motion. Okay, move and second. All in favour? Opposed? Mounts carry. Sorry, motion carries. That zoning amendment bylaw 2010 number 400.477 be given second reading. Second motion. Move and second. All those in favour? Opposed? That Carries. official community plan amendment bylaw 2010 number 6500.009 OCP55 dash part of 3312 Hammond Bay Road to amend Schedule D of the OCP to permit a local service centre be given first reading. Second Moved and seconded. All those in favour? Opposed? Motion carries. That official community plan amendment bylaw 2010 number 6500.009 be given second reading. No. Moved and seconded. All those in favour? Opposed? Carried. That Development Services Department fees and charges amendment by law 2010 number 7016.02 to add a charge for applications to temporary amend a uh, uh, liquor license be given first reading. Second the motion. All those in favour? Oops, sorry. Are you on here? Sorry, we have, well, Councillor Bestwick, you're speaking, and then, and then Councillor Sherry. Uh, as previously um, brought up, uh, I think, by Councillor Sherry, is it related to the fee that's proposed in the report? Uh, I think that there's a suggestion that it may be in, uh, increased. Uh, I'm not wishing to identify what that number is, but it's certainly more than what is in the report. Okay. Councillor Sherry. Well, that's my point, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're voting on what's in the report and I would sooner have staff bring back a a reasonable uh, dollar value. I could save five hundred dollars or three hundred dollars. I don't know that but it's a heck of a lot better for when one considers the amount of time that and the paperwork and what we pay our staff it certainly relates to a a higher value than just one hundred dollars. Okay. Uh, and if staff are looking for a, a, a ballpark figure, uh, I would say closer to $300 than $100. Okay. Councilor Kip. Um, yeah, I'd like to know what type of objective criteria we use for determining the amount. Because I look at a, the place that's applying, for example, they pay quite a hefty amount of taxes, commercial taxes. And they're asking for to be open to stimulate business and that. So how do we objectively figure out the fines? Usually non-profits. Or is it just 300? 
Um, uh, Your Worship, uh, the comparable that staff used was actually the special occasion licenses that we don't charge for, um, although those are um, usually for a non-profit or an event uh, for uh, a private party, not for profit. Um, what I would suggest is that rather than using that as our comparable, we can see if other communities have established a fee and, and bring back a report on what other communities have, have done. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, one more um, go with Councillor Johnson. Still, do you have an issue as well as reading all this good stuff? And then, no. Oh. That's fine. I'm willing to have staff bring it back to us. Okay. And, and finally, the Development Services Department. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, we have oh, 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 oh. okay. Just because it's your birthday, no special privileges okay. here. Now that um, so um, it's been moved and seconded. Um, now, do we want to make uh, someone want to make a, a motion, or is it a recommendation to staff that uh, the price of the fee be uh, uh, reviewed? I, I, Just as a recommendation. I, I, I would uh, move that this bylaw be referred back to staff for a further report as it relates to okay. fees and services charged with uh, and other communities with our problems to uh, uh, come to an evaluation. I second that. Okay. Um, moved and seconded. All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. And I think therefore that would uh, apply to the second part of it as well. We received, I move that we receive the correspondence. Okay, move and second. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, delegations per, uh, pertain to items not on the agenda. Um, Ms. Uh, Sharon Welsh and Ms. Uh, France Tellier on behalf of the school district number 68 uh, anti-vandalism subcommittee to request that council partner with the subcommittee by endorsing their proposed community art project aimed at teaching students social responsibility regarding vandalism and graffiti. And I just want clarification. I, I, my understanding was that this matter had been already referred to our uh, liaison committee. Is there something new that you're going to tell us tonight? Uh, yes, we're applying for a grant and we're asking for a letter. To okay, come forward. You know, that, uh, use the microphone is there. Thank you. Welcome. You have up to 10 minutes. Thank you very much. I'm Sharon Welch and from the school district, and this is France Tellier from the John Howard Society. In January, the school district created an anti-vandalism subcommittee, and I'm the chair of that committee. We recognized that there were lots of problems with vandalism within the school district. We're spending up to about $140,000 a year. And we also recognize that that spills over into our community as well. So when we created this committee, we included educators, district staff, RCMP, Crime Stoppers, and Restorative Justice, because we wanted a committee that involved the whole community in creative problem solving. We recognize that some of the offenders are from within the school district, but there are also others who have graduated or who have not been through the public school system. And we're using two approaches to look at the problem. One is a SEPTED approach, crime prevention through environmental design, to actually design our sites so that they're safer. And the other is a social responsibility standpoint. And although we already address social responsibility in the schools, we want to heighten that even more. So we decided that we wanted to do something positive within the community, and we decided on a community art project, which France will talk about more. This is focusing on getting youth involved in a positive project, project and we are putting forward a grant application to cover that money. And so we are asking the city for three things. One is a letter of support that we can include with the grant application. The second one is a wall where we can do the art project. And the third is to provide t-shirts for the participants that recognize the work they've been done. So at this point, I'll turn it over to France. Good evening, and uh, thank you for listening to us today. Tonight, and um, so this project is called Youth for Cultural Harmony. 
and uh, it's uh, the application is being proposed to the uh, it's called Embrace BC Arts Engagement from the Ministry of Cer- Citizen Services. So they are, they allow funding to up to twenty five thousand dollars to do a project in all communities around the, the province, and there are four allocations for the the region called the island, the island and uh, the north coast. So we are planning to apply for one of those projects for Nanaimo. And it was interesting to watch that property 3230 Norwell Drive, because that really hits to the heart of what we're trying to do here tonight, is, is to look at how youth are doing these vandalism to express themselves and to kind of set their own mark in the world. And we want to change that emphasis to a more uh, positive, more um, creative, in, in many ways, more creative way of, of expressing themselves, more less damaging, less costly, and uh, this would involve the youth who are already at risk of tagging or are identified as taggers. And uh, about approximately 12 youth we hope to identify. And we have uh, grade 8 to grade th- 11. That's when the highest kind of vulnerability is to get involved in that, that kind of si- situation. The project will have three phases. It uh, is planned to start July 1st. And uh, in March 31st, and it's a nine-month project. So the three phases is the first phase is the uh, restorative justice component, and that's where we will build on our successes with restorative justice and bring that into the model, using the uh, the uh, offenders, using bringing together the offenders and the businesses or individuals who have been harmed, the RCMP who are part of the removal of the graffiti, the city that's part of the removal of the gra- graffiti. So all the individuals that play into that, trying to build that kind of responsibility for the youth so that they understand what they're actually doing and the impact it has on individuals rather than just you know, sort of like an, a faceless uh, offender uh, victim. So just bringing that back and we found that very successful in our, in our restorative justice process. So we, we think this would be a good match. The second phase is to match up uh, some some tag, uh, past tag, taggers, individuals who have changed their ways and continue to be creative and artistic and get them to, to mentor the young people and to change the attitudes. And this is all about changing attitude. And so that's the second phase. Then the third phase is to, of course, do the creation of the mural. So it, it, uh, it could be a very exciting project. We were at this uh, conference for School District 68, and they had this big mural at, at Port Theatre. It was really impressive. It was, it's not about encouraging more tagging, more vandalism. It's about building a, an art project together. And so I think that's the, 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 the power of this, this project. The, we are building it on the model that's called Restart in Vancouver. That's been going for a few years, and that's been very successful there. So it has, and there are other projects where murals have been used to change attitude. And, uh, you know, and a component of this is that it needs to address racism and and, uh, and, and to change attitude towards inclusivity of, of people in our communities. So that's the model. So it's not going to be an unguided piece of work. It's going to have a focus and uh, I think could add to our, our communities. Um, like Sharon says, we're here tonight to ask for a letter of support, um, a, a city wall that we could change and create art on, and uh, T-shirts for our participants. So thank you very much for listening. Okay, don't disappear. We have some questions here for you. Councillor Unger. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, certainly a worthy cause to get some of the graffiti cleaned up, but uh, we have a liaison committee between the City of Nanaimo and School District 68 that uh, is designed and was set up this year to handle questions like that. Um, as well, you're also familiar because you sat on the Safer Nanaimo Working Group that looks into projects like this 
and we also have a graffiti committee. Have any of those three been included? Yes, they have. I've already done a presentation to the graffiti task force, and they will be endorsing the project, and I'm scheduled to do a presentation to the Safer Nanaimo group as well. Okay, and that meeting, I believe, is next week. Yeah, uh, and uh, also, uh, uh, since you have gone that route, then tonight is just so you can get the word out to the public via television. That is correct. Thank you. Culture Patchy. Thank you, Sharon and Francis. It's a good presentation. I, I agree with Councillor Unger that I'm, I'm a little bit dumbfounded why this has not come to the Joint Use Committee that uh, Councillor Bestwick and Councillor Sherry and myself sit on because that would have been a good venue. Um, the school district, I have found out in the short time that I've been on this committee, has a lot of walls as well, so um, it wouldn't necessarily have to be ours. Just one question. Where do these offenders come from that you want in this program? How, how, how do you select who? who? Well, there's, there's different venues, but uh, I mean, the court system is one where you can find people that have been charged, then they can go through the alternative system of restorative justice. But there's also identified in, in schools, they've already identified some of the, the taggers because they've had school projects that have been out directly dealing with vandalism. And we had a presentation at the Anti-Vandalism Committee uh, from um, NDSS where they, they have an active project where they, they really are kind of do know already who the individuals are so on a voluntary basis people who have you know, instead of saying go to the courts here's an alternative you know you need to per, uh, participate in this for nine months okay thank you so. councilor johnstone Congratulations. Somebody's finally taking a stand to try and uh, do away with the graffiti. And, well, not finally. We're all trying. But it, I'm amazed that every commission meeting, Parks Commission meeting, and, and Councillor McNabb would agree the cost to the taxpayers for removal of graffiti is just it's prohibitive. If we could educate the youth of the community that if they stop this, uh, or whoever's doing this, and probably we could build another one or two uh, skateboard parks within a, a year or two with the monies we save from, from the graffiti. I see this as another art in public places and I think it might be um, I'll talk to Councillor Paget, but I think it might be worth going to the Cultural Committee as well because this is culture in its best form so thank you for, for taking this step. Thank, thank you, you for the recommendation. Councillor Holden. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, it's interesting, uh, some of the things you're doing, although it seems like there's an lo awful lot going into this, and I'm, try I'm struggling to find a focus. Um, the Anti-Vandalism Subcommittee sounds very much like uh, an old program that we had when I was on school board, so it must be over 30 years ago now, called Project Pride, and uh, had a similar c uh, kind of... Uh, Direction and it did work for several years, so uh, I'm glad to see that's going along. Then you mentioned uh, Youth for Cultural Harmony, and that sounds like transforming tagging into art, which I th think also is a great idea. Uh, then you mentioned restorative justice and the creation of a mural, and pretty soon I'm getting lost as to what the focus is and what you're trying to do. I really think this should be in committee rather than being presented here at council, frankly, uh, so that uh, the focus and the objectives and what you're trying to do can be clearly identified. Thank you. Councillor Bestwick. Thank you, Richard. Uh, thank you for your presentation and your efforts. Um, question, is this grant application time sensitive? Yes. Yes, it is. And what is the time sensitivity of your application? May 26th is the deadline. To submit your application? It is. And we only found out about it uh, two to three weeks ago, so it's quite new. It was just passed by the board. So, um, Your Worship, uh, regardless of uh, yeah. whether it's been around in different names and hip-hop to rap or whatever, I would so recommend, uh, because I think it's a very, very worthwhile and a worthy project, I would so recommend that the uh, City of Nanaimo provide a letter of support uh, for this grant application. Second motion. Second motion. Okay, moved and seconded. We'll, we'll <laughs> go and we have Councillor Kip. Councillor Bess, are you finished with that? Councillor Kip? Is I was just speaking this morning. Oh, but, uh, something different. 
Um, man, we got a lot of committees dealing with the same thing over and over again. We got to get to doing some stuff on the ground. I think they want to do something on the ground. They want to put a beautiful picture up about racism, about different things. So I understood what they want to do, and I commend them. And I just honestly don't understand why we get so wound up about a group coming to put something on TV. That some of the comments by my peers are aimed at that and. This is what it's about. It's about public information, and I appreciate that you came here, and I think this is where it belongs, out in front of the public, not in some other committee somewhere else in well, Never Neverland. I think it's really... Uh, on the matter of a motion on the floor, Mr. Chairman, yes. are we going to uh, vote? Uh, yeah, we hope that, to. Uh, I thought Mr. Uh, Councillor Cooper was going to speak on something different, you said. But, uh, uh, as I say, okay. we got to... Let's stay with this. And, and um, there's a motion on the floor. And I just want to clarify for the motion that it, it's uh, all three, or is it simply just to uh, the it's letter, the letter of, support? of support? Okay. That uh, has been moved. Excuse me. Can, I, can we clarify uh, what, to whom we are writing and what's, what of these uh, all admirable projects we're supporting? Okay. The motion, Your Worship, is to, to provide a letter of support what they ask for. For, for the grant application, this is not about providing a wall or T-shirts. This is about supporting the initiative of Ms. Welsh and, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I don't, from Francis 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 Tellier, from uh, the John Howard Society in their initiative. Uh, they're not asking us for any money. They're asking us for a letter to go out into the community and try to make it yeah, I think something just, that we have a place of pride. Yeah, we're just looking for clarification on, on your motion, and it's just a letter to support is what, what your motion was. To whom is the letter to you sent? Yeah, yeah, and the question was, yeah, maybe we get the delegation um, the to give us some direction on that. The application will be submitted by the John Howard Society. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm quite Two. certain that... Two. To let's embrace BCR. And you're going to address it to whom? We don't have an individual's okay. contact information. Maybe could we just ask that you relay to staff the the, the proper address for us so we can do that? Okay, so we're going to vote on this thing. All those in favor? Opposed? <laughs> you're opposed? I'm opposed because I don't know what we're talking about, frankly. Well, okay. Anyway, um, so the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much, seconder. Yep. All those in favor? And now the uh, question period. Agenda items only. Fred on. What the? My name is Fred Taylor of 204 Emory Way. I've watched Council in the last three meetings deal with the awarding of a contract to spend taxpayers' money. I'm also aware of a bylaw where it's over $250,000. You have the right, in my opinion, to say yes or no. I'm wondering with that, I, I don't understand why the issue would be brought before you if you have no legal right to say no. As well as... Um, what well, your contracts? Have yeah, Mr. Taylor, I, I think that what staff said is that uh, they suggested that uh, we may be challenged uh, rather than a definite yes or no. Would it be proper to put in each contract the lowest tender or whatever the words are may not be accepted, as well as subject to council bylaw, which is the one that gives you the right to award it if it's over 250? Thousand. Um, okay. Of course, we are reviewing the process, so that's one of the reasons. It's not just an unfettered right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's right. We have already passed a motion. We're reviewing the. Uh, well, I'm saying if you've got a bylaw that's uh, is valid, uh, why can it not go in those contracts that is subject to that particular bylaw, which gives you the right to approve or disapprove of it? That might well happen in the future. And is council approved to date give, awarding five-year contracts? That will also be reviewed. Thank you. Okay. Move to adjourn. Second. <laughs>